And with that, we welcome you inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, Kanoa Leahy, along with Lisa Strand. Lisa, take us through the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. And for UC San Diego, they're going to push for a battle. They're going to put up their best fight. They're here to play, and they want to be the best that they can possibly be. And for UH, to control your destination. Stay focused on the commitment that you've made, all the undone business, and all of your hard work. The Warriors are ready to go. Hawaii has played in every Big West Conference Tournament Championship match. There have been two, 2018 and 2019. They faced Long Beach State in both of those years. Beach got bounced, though, earlier this evening by UC Santa Barbara. They await the winner of this one tomorrow night. And the first set goes to Pat Gassman in the middle, unable to get it down. On the other side, it's Colin Shannon taking the first whack for the Gauchos. Gassman right back at it. And Jakob Tella obviously looking to get the gas man, Uncle Pat, involved early. Trying to get those middle established early always opens up the outsides and Rado Parapunov. Starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen as you will see. Jakob Tella to serve. One serving zero here. Good first touch there by Matt Palma and Gassman. Solo stuff in the middle on Shane Bennett's Pat Gassman. Third in the NCAA coming into this tournament in blocks per set. That is his 12th solo stuff of the season. And San Diego trying to establish their middle early, I'm sure, off of a good pass. Layout pass there by Palma. Right side, it goes to Kyle McCauley. We will be calling that name quite a lot here tonight. He is their go-to offensively, leading the team 3.66 kills per set, hitting 208. Went for 18 kills and a career-high 12 digs, not to mention three aces versus CSUN last night. He's spectacular to watch, incredibly unassuming, but... He's just an amazing athlete. And Rado hitting that one fat. It goes long, and so we're tied at two early. McCulley, a 6'4 senior out of Huntington Beach, California, a transfer from Orange Coast College. And here he is on the serve. Passed by Gage Worsley. And Tella goes backside. Colton Cowell, his first swing at it. Unable to get it down. Back row set. McCulley through the triple block and down. And he continues to be solid for his team. Not a ton of emotion out of McCulley. First team all Big West the last two years. Took a little something off there. Cowell retrieves it. Quick middle goes to Gassman. McCulley with the dig. So high ball set goes to Ryan Ka. And he gets it down in front of a diving Chaz Galloway. You saw that piece in the game on portion of the broadcast where those two, Ka and Galloway, both high flyers, played club volleyball together. And I'm sure they'll be squaring off through the net quite a few times here this evening. Guaranteed. Galloway, the first touch there, actually hits the scoreboard overhead. Bump set from Worsley to Rado Parapunov off the block. Worsley again sets up Rod a little tight to the pin, so he has to just touch it over. Chance here for the Tritons. Shannon! Oh, he got that one smothered. 6'10", Gassman, 6'9", Rado. But we got a net violation called against the Rainbow Warriors. And you see the look of befuddlement from Rado Parapunov in particular. But yeah, it looks like Gassman came into the twine. Rainbow Warrior Volleyball on Spectrum Sports is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. Welcome back. So UC San Diego, there was some concern, some thought as to whether or not they have a lot left in the tank after an emotional, historic, if you will, victory last night for the program. Their first postseason win since they joined the Division II ranks back in 2001, now D1 and obviously part of the Big West Conference. But it was a reason to celebrate, according to head coach Kevin Ring. The concern was, would they come down from that enough to be able to focus? Would they still have some energy left and some legs here going up against the rested Hawaii team? Well, they're off to a decent start here, 5-2, but Pat Gasman writes the ship at least momentarily out of the timeout. He just puts the hurt on that one. And that's exactly what a first contact good pass can do for the Warriors. 
they pass well, they can get the ball to exactly. Jakob Tella has his choice of wherever he wants to go. Here's Colton Cowell on the serve. Set goes outside. Ka didn't get all of it. Diving save Tella. So Worsley sets up Potapunov through the triple block. And down. Rado Potapunov, second in the NCAA in kills per set. Four and a half kills per stanza. Hitting 367. You see the numbers. They are just large. 21 straight matches going back to last year with double figure kills. And one pops straight up in the air by McCulley. And the second touch goes over the net. Gassman able to dump it down. And all of a sudden, three straight points for Hawaii. And we're tied at five. Patrick Gassman making his 6'10 senior presence known at the net. Nothing's going to get by him. He is on a mission. He came back. And this team came back to play, and they've got some unfinished business here. Five serving five. Cowell, does that go long? Yes, it does, narrowly. Oh, what, you wanted a touch? Did they get a touch? Yes, they did. So an ace for Cowell. It's going to be his 15th of the season, and Kevin Ring, 16th year head coach for the Tritons, trying to get an explanation. And Matt Palma did a little bit of acting on that one, come up and say, hey, we didn't touch it, and then kind of chuckled a little bit and noticed there was not a challenge. 67 mile an hour serve there by Cowell. McCauley by the double block, the save by Tella. So Colton sets up Rado tight to the net. He gets blocked, Gassman the cover. Tella back again to Potapunov, block. The up by Galloway goes over the net and out. And it's a point for UCSD. Tritons 4 and 12 overall on the year after that win last night over CSUN. 3 and 7 was their regular season Big West Conference record. They finished fourth, so they are the fourth seed, although they are ranked 14th in the latest ABCA poll. Hawaii, of course, 15 and 0. They finished the regular season unbeaten for the first time. Their first regular season conference title since 1980 as Chaz Galloway gets into that one and gets into the kill column. Hawaii 10-0 in the Big West, and they got the benefit of the bye last night. And the number one team in the land. They enjoyed that benefit of the bye. They, most of them were here in the Simplify Arena at the Stan Sheriff scouting their next opponent. Oh, that's an ace. Pings right up against that back line, and Ear-to-ear -ear smile there, courtesy Pat Gassman. Pat Gassman, years when he first started, was begging to stay in and jump serve and be in. And he had many opportunity, but Charlie Wade was not about to let him. But he has truly improved his serve, and he has been a huge threat from the back service line. Oh, well, he up two. Here's Ka swooping in, goes off the block and out. Yeah, it's funny to hear Pat Gassman characterizing the communication from Charlie Wade about serving, right? Because Charlie always puts it into golfing terms, right? Uses that analogy saying, you don't always want to hit with driver. You want to pull driver every now and then. And Pat, when he talks about it, says, I don't really know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes you got to explain some of those things. Maybe Pat well, Gasman doesn't golf. <laughs> got to keep it in perspective. He, he'd need a special pair of golf clubs, right, at 6'10". I'm, I'm thinking Pat Gasman's of the personality that if he does golf, he's always busting out driver. Nine serving seven. Arapunov, good serve there. Even better pass by Palma. Shannon is dug up over the net. Voss helped to guide it down just to be sure. As Guilherme Voss has been playing some really good volleyball as of late, hitting 6.05, in fact, over the two previous weekend series. Gets another put down there. Yeah, Voss just got some experience behind him playing a lot of international ball as well. He's one of those unsung. He fits this team so well in the little things that he does. Ah, uh, dink shot, diving save by Potapunov. Bump set to Galloway, sends it long. Was there a touch? No touch. Potapunov playing some spectacular defense, bringing that up. Jakob Tella with a perfect bump set. Galloway was just drooling at that set, I think. Hawaii and UC San Diego playing for the fifth time of this year. We played early on in the season. For UCSD was actually their season opening series. 
in California. And then they came here to play a pair of matches as well as Ryan Ka, the fortuitous ricochet off the net for the ace. And actually played in Hawaii's home opening series. That was back on March 26th and 27th. That first night, UCSD was able to push Hawaii to four. All the other matches, though, the three others were sweep victories for the Rainbow Warriors. High ball, D set goes to Rado, dug up by Palma, tight to the net. Touched over, chance here for Hawaii. Colton Cowell swinging from the back row on two. Here's Ka from the back row. That may have been an out ball played by Shannon. Here's McCauley off the fingertips, the save by Cowell. So tell him, backside, Rado, two blockers against him, and they shut the door. And the Tritons playing some great defense, putting up a nice soft block, slowing a lot of balls down, and then bringing them up. But Rado Parapunov just barely not capable of getting that ball down. See Logan Clark's blocking numbers. We were waiting for Rado that time. Three straight points for the Tritons. Good service run here by Cobb. High and away, it goes to Galloway, up the ladder and down the shoot it goes. He's so springy, he's got a little extra hang time up there. He waits and the blockers are actually starting almost to come down when he unloads on that ball. See what he did back on March 27th against the Tritons, nine kills, hit 400, tickles the tape. We've seen a lot of that from the service line here this evening. And that one's not going to get back over. Creating some serious trouble from that back line, Chaz Galloway. I think he's just as effective in the backcourt as he is in the front court. Serving, playing defense, and hitting the bit. He has truly made his way onto this starting lineup as a sixth rotation player. And he gets credit for that ace. Looks towards the bench, perhaps for some guidance from Charlie Way, but some moments being taken to wipe some perspiration off of the deck. Yeah, we heard from his mom, Melinda, the other night, and she was mentioning that, you know, the hops sort of run in the Galloway family, if you will. Sister Cambria, volleyball player, track and field athlete, the U.S. Air Force Academy, and is looking to continue the aerial assault as uh, a fighter jet pilot and there's a great picture of Cambria as for Chaz's hops they said you know he had one of those Johnny jump up little strap in deals or he was just hopping up and down grew up with a trampoline his dad Craig track and field and jump coach at Cathedral Catholic High School so jumping is just part of the family they, they bred him really young into that genetics and what a great story on his sister. Yeah. You know, that she's so successful. And I, I believe she actually played volleyball as well, right? Yes. Yeah. She's got some spring as well. As Voss tried to go cross court, he gets it down. And there's that quick back set that him and Jakob Tella have been doing later in the season here. And it has been quite successful. Not a great connection on that one, but still a kill. 14 serving 11. Hawaii hitting 211 as a squad here compared to 267 for the Tritons. Voss lofts it down the line, forces the overpass. Teller's going to center it. Galloway sets up Cowell. And he hammers it down the line. Great job to keep it alive, though, by the setter Blake Crisp. And we play on in the sequence. Middle set, Gassman. Oh, boy. Gassman again just continues to unload. If you can get him the ball, get him the ball. He's up. He's got basically somebody jump with him, but still gets away with the kill. Tops, tops in the NCAA in kill percentage. Pat Gassman coming into this match hitting 497. He's got four kills on six swings and no errors so far to start this match. He continues where he left off. His numbers have been astronomical yeah. this year. It has been a steady rise throughout his career from year to year. He is going to leave this program as the winningest player in UH history. He has been part of 103 victories. That's a crazy thought. 
and especially in a shortened season last season and a shortened season this season. We'd like to be part of a few more, though, and those kind of plays will help makes the decision to swing it on the overpass. That was drifting off the net, so he had to time that one pretty precisely, and he did away by a handful. Timeout, UCSD. For the latest information on UH Athletics, go to hawaiiathletics.com for UH news, tickets, videos, and more. Also visit UH's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube sites to follow your favorite teams and get current fan promotions. Look at all the Moana Beach Park. From a wonderful aerial view. Pat Gassman at 6'10", he usually has a pretty good aerial view of the floor. He's doing it in a number of ways here so far, Lisa from behind the service line as well as right there at the net. He sure is. He has definitely come to play. He is all in, he's motivated, and he's going at full strength ahead. Even got a haircut for the match. Yeah, he's looking sharp. After senior night here a week ago, Hawaii swept UC Irvine three straight. And that's an ace by Jakob Tella. Hawaii already with four service aces in this first frame. Putting a lot of pressure on the Titans from the service line. And Charlie Wade has alluded to it. He says, if we serve tough, much like how they served against UC Irvine on senior night, they're going to be a very difficult team to beat, no matter who they're playing. Bump set goes to Cowell off the block. How about the layout save? by Galloway. Cowell over the shoulder off the set from Worsley. It's picked up by Kahl along the back line. Shannon is able to get a touch off the block and it's a point for UC San Diego. Some great defense. Chaz Galloway on the save and G Swizzles following him. Colin Shannon just swinging away for hands. And the veteranship of Rado Parapunov and Pat Gasman. Did you see Rado? I mean, he waved his arms. He was very definitive about the fact that he didn't touch it when clearly he did. And then he and Pat Gasman just sort of smile at each other. Service ace there for Kyle McCauley. But take another look at what is his 22nd service ace of the season. But yeah, that's. That's some uh, experience right there. It is. I think it was the drama 101 that UH requires <laughs> you to take. You got to try to sell it. That's right. At all times. High and away. Here's Rado blocked and roofed. Bennett's was up there. Colin Shannon may have got the gist of it. He was closest to the edge. And one of the things that UCSD had to do last night after their victory was go back, get something to eat, and watch a lot of film. They're no stranger to the University of Hawaii. This is their fifth meeting this year, so they made some adjustments, and their blocking tonight has been pretty spectacular. And another ace by McCauley. So after Hawaii had built its largest lead of the set, they were up by six, four straight Tritons points, and that prompts a Charlie Wade timeout. So where we've seen through some of the matches here in this tournament, and look at Rado, he was off the floor when that one hit him. But what we've seen are a lot of trading of blows, right, point for point. This first set has been a little bit more of a long run swing type of first frame. Definitely, and you know, University of Hawaii having that bye last night, I think they've come out definitely ready to play, of course, but UCSD, they've played already, and they're a little bit in system, and they're very unassuming. You look at them, and you kind of don't expect them to do what they do, but they're incredibly disciplined in the little things. That was pretty remarkable, though. Rado standing out of bounds. I mean, he just did not want any part of that serve-receive scheme. Yeah, well, he's not supposed to be in the serve-receive right. scheme. So he's trying to uh, get out and actually let the passers pass so that he can attack. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you kind of take it for granted. Yeah, yeah. A little good fortune, certainly, on the side of McCauley and being able to ping him on the hip there. Let's take a look at the jackback. Historic victory, yes it was. Last night's four set win over CSUN was UC San Diego's first ever postseason victory for men's volleyball at the Division I or II level. We mentioned they joined D2 in 2001. And, uh, Kevin Ring was not dismissive about that fact at all. He said in his post-match interview with us, 
He said, hey, look, we're going to take some time to celebrate because this is a big deal for us. He said, we'll be ready to play tomorrow, but there's no denying how important this night was for our program. Let's check in with Ryan. Hey, thanks, Kanoa. Well, Hawaii is currently in rotation number one, and that's when the setter is in the right-back position. It's a serve-receive formation that Hawaii has had problems with. We flashback to last week or when this team played. Uh, they actually had trouble in this same rotation. All three seniors are actually in the front row with Gasman, Parapunov, and Kawa. Yet Hawaii has struggled in this serve-receive rotation. Uh, also, Rada Parapunov hitting from the left side, primarily on the right side hitter. But this is a rotation that Hawaii has got to learn how to work their way out of. Back over to you. That's a great observation, Ryan. As out of the timeout, it goes into the net. And strategically, of course, you have the best point scoring server behind the line on the opposite side of the net. So the, the chess match and strategies involved with this, uh, it really is interesting. Thanks for that breakdown there, Ryan, as that serve goes long from Colton Cowell. And usually when Colton Cowell goes back to serve, it's actually been a good scoring run. Here's Bryce Curtis, 6'5", senior from San Clemente, California. Serving specialist, passed by Gage Worsley on the button, and the set to Pat Gassman on the button. Well, Pat Gassman's been the star hitter, really, for both sides. As he now has six kills on nine swings. He's hitting 667. Nobody else has more than two kills on the floor. Yeah, he's definitely controlling the offense, but truly it all stems from that first contact, that first pass being spot on. Can he follow it up with a good serve? Pass there by Palma in the middle set. Not exactly crushed by Logan Clark, but put it in the perfect spot. And Logan Clark contributes to his team not huge offensively, but what he does do is slows a lot of balls down. And a 6'7 junior from Chula Vista actually played setter for two years in high school before making his way to UC San Diego. Potapunov, that was a nectar right there, and he just blew it up. Potapunov, beautiful set by Jakob Tella, and he... Ryan Cog giving him line, and he took that line. And there are four Hawaii players on the All Big West first team. Same four players that were on the Big West first team last year as Galloway blocked back McCulley. But Ka now with the swing, three blockers up. How about the layout saved by Worsley and Voss with the miss hit. And that was when Tella was right there. Voss didn't need to take on that second touch. Yeah, and he, and he knows it. It's just an instant reaction there. You can kind of see them communicating about it. But a great effort by Gage Worsley diving. And not only a great effort, but it was spot on target. And Gage Worsley, a three-time First team all Big West selection. Pat Gasman, a four timer, by the way. And that's a record as Colton Powell sends it long. A record that has never been achieved. Right. He's the first. The first. And so, you know, he's in a category all by himself. He's risen that, taken that <laughs> ladder all the, in his time here at the University of Hawaii. There's Ryan Kaw. It's the top of the tape on the serve. Tella goes outside. Galloway, he was way up above the net, but couldn't get it down. McCauley with three blockers against him, plays it up himself. Now Shannon from behind the line. That one dug up by Cowell. Backside, Rado by the double block. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. And that's a point for Hawaii. I think Matt Palma actually touched that. But boy, Rado the Rocket coming off strong with some great defense. Colton Cal digging spot on. Yakutella knowing where his go-to guy is. <laughs> Picture of Matt Palma, the 5'11 junior. Yeah. Entering the tournament second among Big West liberos in digs. That's including all matches, conference and non-conference. As Colton Cowell was able to put up the defense at the net on that one. And Hawaii up three here, trying to close the deal on a set one victory. And we're going to get a timeout from Kevin Ring. 
That's a great block by Colton Calla. You gotta love this camera angle and view. Great coverage, low and tight. Big point for Hawaii. So Hawaii hitting 226 here in this first frame compared to 217. But where they've been able to set a bit of a tone is from the service line, four service aces. But UC San Diego, to their credit, keeping pace. They're actually out blocking Hawaii. They have three aces on their side. So they've been putting up quite the effort. Will they be able to sustain this over the course of a full match remains to be seen. Well, that's exactly it. When we take a look at Kevin Ring, he talks to his team about just coming to pl play and trying to create opportunities to score. That's been his thing all season long. Well, Monday, it's a double dose of OIA boys volleyball. Catch Kailua versus Castle at 6.15 p.m. on Spectrum OC16 and Kalani versus Kalaheo at 6.30 p.m. on Spectrum XCast. And interestingly enough, Kevin Ring is a biochemistry degree and a master's in chemistry. So, so few of us. Yeah, well, remember, Kanoa, you were talking about <laughs> that earlier. Were you a physics major? Sure, let's not dwell on the details there. The Alani grad, come on. Well, prior to the timeout, I think we saw the insertion of Wyatt Harrison into the match for UC San Diego. And he is in on the huddle, and here he is now coming out to the floor. 6'5", senior from Kilauea, Kauai. Injured his ankle during warm-ups of the second match against Hawaii. That was the second match of the season for the Tritons, and he was out for a long, long time. Actually made his return last night. That's right. He came in and passed nails just to steady things out. He only touched a few balls, but he made a huge difference in their victory. So good to see him out there, one of the tri-captains for UC San Diego. 23 serving 20. Chris sets up McCauley by the triple block. Layout, one hand saved by Worsley. And then Rado didn't get it above the tape. So perhaps a wasted highlight there from Gage Worsley. I mean, that's vintage what he was able to do to keep that sequence alive. He's reading it like a book. Take a quick look at this replay. Gage Worsley with stretching it out with his left hand, not only bringing it up, but very playable ball. Interestingly enough, you see Rado standing back there way deep for the jump float serve. The middle set Voss that was heavy handed in Hawaii with Aloha Ball here in set one. How funny were Gage's parents, by the way, on senior night with their presentation? Oh, they were great. They were so into it. They, you know, they were actually here. Uh, they flew out thinking that possibly they, they might allow the parents to come in, but they were here and they just got so much character between the two of them. And you wonder where Gage gets it, right? It's pretty, it's pretty obvious, yeah. Not from one side or the other, it's from both as Kanai Akana comes in to serve. Set point in the first, McCauley blocked back. The cover by Palma. Set goes to McCauley through the block this time and down. So UCSD not ready to move on to set two just yet. No, McCauley powering that through. You know, he's so smart on the outside there. He sees the block, he knows it's big. He hits into it purposely to be able to play the ball again. It's a very veteran move. So here is Blake Crisp, 6'3", junior from Westlake Village, California. Tella outside, Takawa blocked, popped up by Galloway. High ball set goes to Rado, he's blocked, played up by Gassman. Tight to the net, we got a joust there, Worsley keeps it alive. Tella the set to Gassman, and he puts an exclamation point on the end of set number one. It looked like Tello was going to try to crush it himself and then at the last moment set up the big fella and Uncle Pat just demolishes it. 25-22, Warriors. Welcome back. The view from Mauna Kea above the clouds. And that's where some of the hitters that we've seen here in this Big West Men's Volleyball Championship tournament tend to hover as well. well let's check out the First Hawaiian Bank top three. Big West kills per set. Rado Parapunov, he's at the top. 4.52, Randy DeWeese for UC Santa Barbara. A 
awaiting the winner of this one in the championship tomorrow. He's in second place in Spencer Olivier. Long Beach State getting dethroned earlier this evening. The two-time defending national champs. Uh, but boy, was Spencer Olivier incredible throughout this season and this tournament. Parapunov hitting negative numbers here so far, Lisa. Three kills on 12 attacks, five errors. But he got it done down the stretch a number of times. Yeah, we saw Rado struggle a little bit earlier in the week, or last week, should I say, against UC Irvine. And I'll tell you what, he's such a good player. He will self-correct. He, he knows he's struggling a little bit. He's going to get his feet underneath him. They've seemed a little bit like he hasn't totally gotten to the ball. But trust me when I say he will fix this. He will not end up with negative numbers. So here's a look at the updated bracket. It's been all chalk here so far with the top seed in each matchup advancing. Can Hawaii keep that trend going? That's certainly their hope. And if so, it would be a matchup of one versus two in the final, but a lot of work here to do after Hawaii takes the first set, 25-22. Take a look at Rick McLaughlin, who almost sensed that we were about to put him on camera, and he just got out of dodge. It's time to go. Trying to do some live scouting, I'm sure. Head coach for Santa Barbara. That's an out serve for Hawaii. How good, by the way, in that early match was Ryan Wilcox, the Punahou alum. 16 kills, hit 324. And Rick McLaughlin after the match said, hey, look, that's what we get from him just about every night. He's one of the energy guys, one of the go-to weapons on offense. He certainly delivered often here tonight as Colton Cowell gets that one turned back. McCauley was up there along with Bennett's. And again, the disciplinary of their block, it's like textbook. They're reading it very well. They're reading the sets well. They got two up low and tight for a point. So two serving zero. Tella has high ball outside to Rado, slices it cross court and handcuffs McCauley for Hawaii's first point of set two. And Rado, he likes hitting from that left side. He doesn't get very many opportunities to hit from the left. Normally he's in the opposite position, which is on the right side. But when he does, he loves to celebrate. Three-time ABCA National Player of the Week here this season. And certainly one of the prime candidates for National Player of the Year. We will get some of the larger individual award announcements at the conclusion of this tournament. By the way, we got the first team honorable mention and all freshman team announcements earlier in the week. But we'll await coach of the year, player of the year, etc. Well, definitely because you want to see how everybody plays out. As these teams have had such a short season, there a lot of these players are just starting to peak and get into the the real of their season, the meat of their season. Here's McCauley. ABCA first team All-American and Newcomer of the Year last year after transferring from Orange Coast College. And he applied the laser beam serve right there. That was some hard heat. That was 71 miles an hour. He definitely gets some heat behind his serve. So each team now with four service aces and it's four serving one in set two. Powell. The good serve reception gets the set from behind the line. Pinballed around, but Palma was unable to get it over. Couldn't quite get the platform under it. And Cal just unloading on that ball from the back court. With yep. his second kill on the evening. Another example, too, of Cowell and his medal in the serve reception department coming into this match. 967 percentage, eight errors in 246 attempts. Yeah, that's a scary number. And it's some of those things that we don't always see. We see the kill percentages and who leads and kills, but you don't see the little things that come along with this game. We talk about the first contact. Critical. We're getting a review challenge here. Colton Cowell on that kill was hitting from the back row and the challenge is whether or not he crossed the three meter line. It looks like he was okay. You know, it's interesting because from our vantage point, we're 
a little bit offset from the three meter line and it did look awfully close on the jump sort of made the mental note in my mind but from that replay it was pretty clear he was behind the line so it is a failed challenge by kevin ring and even if you step on that line it's considered a violation so on the replay it definitely shows he didn't but from our angle i thought it was over as well so again the standard replay challenge system being applied here in this Big West Volleyball Championship tournament. Three challenges each side. You win the challenge, you keep it. And if it goes to a fifth, each side gets an extra challenge. And Gatsman busted out the driver on that one and sent it long. <laughs> you think he knows what a driver is? <laughs> I hope so by now. He's like working as a project engineer already, so I'm pretty sure he does have the knowledge in other walks of life as Rado goes through the block and down. Not only working, but also volunteering for Special Olympics and doing a lot of little things to contribute to the communities and give back to the university and the state of Hawaii. Yeah, he's a, he's a great story of a guy who has just embedded himself in this place. There's Potapunov into the net. So Hawaii experiencing some serving difficulties here in the early portion of set number two. On senior night when uh, Patrick Gassman's father actually, we saw the video up on the overhead on the Jumbotron, he actually thanked the state of Hawaii and everybody that has contributed into making his son or helping his son become the man he has become. Powell wants the touch, doesn't get it going to be an out call and so a point for UC San Diego and it looks like Charlie Wade's going to go over and challenge that. So one of those Charlie challenges coming up here as Burt Fuller the R2 will take a look. Tony Chan by the way is the chief of this crew. The R1 atop the ladder. Mark Nakashima, Kevin Chun, Mel Cayetano, John Park are the line judges. And Colton Cowell immediately turned and looked at Charlie Wade and shook his head. Yes, there was definitely a touch. Very nonchalantly, just kind of quietly encouraging his coach to back him up. Hmm. And if there was a touch, I would have to say it might have been off of Logan Clark, number two's right hand yeah it would maybe be that right thumb if anything very hard to see not sure how conclusive this look will ultimately be though from the vantage point of Burt fuller yeah big question mark and again it's a great asset to have the challenges but oftentimes it's hard to conclude if it's, like you said, it has to be 100% I saw this happen. That's right. Call on the floor was no touch. So they need incontrovertible evidence. You see any fingers bending there? Hard to decipher, to be honest. be a no touch call that stands failed challenge for Charlie Wade and call with the sarcastic smile in response like, it, yeah, incredulous right. if you will well you know you do not have to call your own touches that's why they have the replay and then Shannon follows that up with an ace fifth service ace for UC San Diego, and they have opened up a five-point advantage here in set two. And Colin Shannon at 6-7 has a very interesting approach, not only to the front row attack, but when you watch his serve, his toss is way out in front of him. And that goes into the net. One for one there. Colin Shannon, his mom played tennis at Stanford and then later captained the U.S. national water polo team. Yeah, Colin himself played some water polo in high school, right? Yeah. And then that goes into the twine. Some unforced airs here. Uncharacteristic. Hawaii's serving has usually really been good this year. They've done 
a lot of work on serving. Charlie Wade is huge on that. I mean, that's clearly when they are at their best, is when they are serving effectively. And right now, they are letting UC San Diego off the hook a few times as Cowell crushes that one. It's almost like Colton Cowell will elevate his game, you know, when things maybe don't go exactly how he wants. He always comes back and makes the next play better. Two kills for Colton, but he's hitting negative 091. Rado has five kills, but he's flatlining it right now. So some fairly uncharacteristic numbers in the hitting percentage department. And that's going to be an ace by Guilherme Voss. Everyone on the Triton side thought it was going long. They sort of just let it by. And, and this is that jump float that is really deceptive. It hung up there just long enough. You can watch it with your eyes, but you usually got to move your feet to the ball. Yeah, that was well inside that end line. Hawaii within three, McCauley, and that goes long. That so they're going to call it in, overruled. Was very I thought it was in. We're sitting right here. Yeah, line judge on the spot called out. It was overruled. And probably the right call based on what we saw, at least in real time. So 10 serving six. Slapped over by Logan Clark outside. Here's Cowell. The block was late. And it's dug up over the net. Tella to Gassman. And did he go long with it? No touch. And for Pat Gassman, his first hitting error of the match. And that's unfortunate because Jakob Tella jumped like he was going to attack the ball, which he very easily could. He held the blockers, and then he set Pat Gassman. And you got to like the communication between the two of them. So 11 serving six. Pancake reception by Teleno. They're going to say that that touched the Terraflex. So an ace that just curls over the tape by Logan Clark. And the Tritons have Hawaii doubled up here in set two. Great effort by Tela for not. Coming up on Everything Hawaii, adventurer Kavika Singson captures whale songs while diving through a bait ball in Kailua Bay. Check it out Sunday night at 8.30 exclusively on Spectrum OC16. Look at the sun descending off of the North Shore. UCSD has turned things around a little bit here in this second set, Lisa. They have six service aces as a team. And they have given Hawaii all kinds of problems. Three of those aces have come in this second set alone. And right now they have Charlie Wade's crew doubled up. They do, and, and UC San Diego hitting at 1,000 during this current set, and Hawaii hitting at 125. Tella, middle to Gassman. And looks like we got a net violation against the Triton, so a much needed point for the Rainbow Warriors. And so much of this starting for the Tritons from the service line, like you said, six service aces, but not only aces, but putting Hawaii in a lot of trouble. Hawaii needs to settle down and take care again of that first contact. This is a guy that can stir up some trouble from the service line. Took a little something off there. Set goes to Bennett's block back. Played up by Crisp. It goes over the net, so Hawaii will transition. Rado blocked and roofed. Padapunov has been targeted by this Triton's blocking scheme, and it has been effective. They have, dare we say, slowed Rado down here in the first two sets. They definitely have. They've focused in on him. He's dropping his elbow just a little, hitting low into the block instead of trying to work around the block. But give credit to San Diego. They're doing a nice job slowing the big guy down. Rock, uh, Rado, five kills, six Errors hitting at 067 right now. Yeah, negative 067. And hey, look, you can keep them down. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to continue to do that. We saw it on the first night against UC Irvine. He only had three kills through two sets, was hitting negative numbers, turned it around, ended up with 25 kills, hitting over 400. Uh, it looks like there might be some blood on the court. Maybe came off of Gassman's knee that applied a Band-Aid there. And we're going to have to clean that up here before we continue. Yeah, Gassman went down to his knee, and his knee pad actually went down, and he immediately signaled, uh, there's blood. It's 
So they'll take care of that. But I think Hawaii's offense being a little bit too predictable. So they've been scouted out well. These teams, again, no stranger to one another. They've played each other. This is the fifth time. Look for Jakob Tella to get it himself involved a little bit offensively, possibly going over on two or possibly running the BIC. Getting the backcourt involved offensively. All right, well, while we have a pause in the action, let's check in with uh, our own team member, James Anastasiadis, who was part of the senior festivities last week. Uh, and so just wanted to kind of ask you what you're seeing here in this second set and, and what gives you the uh, impression that UC San Diego's maybe figured some stuff out. Yeah, Lisa, I think you said it perfectly. UCSC, after facing Hawaii four times, has probably developed a very, very good scouting report. But other than executing that scouting report very well, we're seeing from the service line, they're putting so much pressure on Hawaii, which they have not seen this entire season. A little inside, um, Charlie Wade did say that last night. He did see UCSD had been serving in the high 70s. And that's going to be a challenge for Hawaii, something that we haven't seen in the Big West Conference too much this year, but something that he did want his team to try and practice going into the NCAA tournament. And we see Hawaii's been struggling, especially with their big three seniors from the service line here in this set. I believe Jakob Taylor was the last one to go back and serve, took a little bit of off it, trying to get his team back in a rhythm into the serve. But what a great job San Diego has done to execute their scouting report and slow down Rattle Power Punoff in the back row. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, James. Good stuff. Out of the timeout, middle set goes to Gassman. And he makes sure that time, Pat Gassman, with his ninth kill already of this match. He leads everybody. So that's his 13th swing, too. Second most attempts of anybody on the floor behind only Rado Parapuna. And it's nice to see Jakob Tella going to the middle as often as he is. And Powell with the serve. Backside, it's McCauley through the block. Gage Worsley slides in to keep it going. Galloway up off the trampoline. Chaz Galloway getting his third kill on the evening. Charlie Wade talking about him and how he's really evolved and become so mature in so many aspects this year for the program. McCauley. Had to contort his body to avoid that block proposed by Gassman and Galloway and was able to do so successfully. Well, he's a contortion, contortion artist, I guess you could say. <laughs> he's doing a really nice job moving that ball around from the service line and from the front line. And that one registering at high 60s. Yeah, just got... A little bit too much behind it. Yeah, straight fastball <laughs> found its way out beyond the end line. So 10 serving 14. Gassman. Top spin serve with a pass by Palma. Outside it's Ka. One hand save over the net and out by Gassman. Ryan Ka has become such a story this year for UC San Diego. Thrust into the starting rotation due to the injury to Wyatt Harrison and he's just done a phenomenal job 17 kills hitting 286 and there's a certain humility that he brings to the table he as Rado hammers that down we mentioned 17 kills hit 286 that was last night against CSUN also had six blocks but he was talking after the match like hey look this is just the first time I'm experiencing all this I didn't really play all that much prior to this season. So uh, I'm just going through this with a almost innocent naivete. It's almost like he doesn't know any different. He has no pressure on him whatsoever. He swings freely and he just is himself completely out there. No fear. Here he is again, gets blocked. They got to scramble to get it over, but the roof was stout. Therefore, Hawaii, Guilherme Voss getting his paws on it. Guilherme Voss and, and Tella, I believe, on that one. serving 15. Here's Rado. First touch, McCauley. And that's going to be an ace. Rado Potapunov, who was in the zone from the service line on senior night last week. He was fireballing it down the stretch of that match. Timeout UCSD. 
Welcome back. There you see the southern coastline of the island of Kauai. Kauai leading in this set over UC San Diego. Or in this match, I should say, one set to none. But trailing in this set, 15-13. We have seen some high-level serving so far in this match, Lisa. We definitely have from both sides, Patrick Gassman there serving away many aces from both sides. But Surrey, what you're gonna notice is in between the seams, not necessarily except for that one, in between the players driving and forcing numerous airs and aces. Six aces on each side. Rado out of the timeout, took a little something off, made sure it got in there. Outside Ka up on springs, but it tight rope walks the top of the tape and winds up out. So an unlucky ricochet there. That's not going to wipe the smile off of Ka's face, though. He's always having fun out there. Hawaii within one. He's just going to continue to push for the battle, and that's what he's been taught by head coach Kevin Ring in his 16th season. He says, hey, we're here to put up our best fight. We're here to play. Rado once again smelling the ball before he delivers the serve. Backside, and it's Shannon. Shannon bringing some heat here. Yeah, Colin Shannon doing a nice job on his third kill in the evening. The 6'7 senior out of Westwood, California. He of the scissor kick approach. You can see it sort of scissors the legs. You can see it on the jump serve as well. Uh, related to the Vanderway family, Uncle Kiki was a college pro and college pro basketball star as well. How about Tella on two with the smack? And I think Jakob Tella, when he does that, it really puts the opposing team on defense immediately. They don't know whether to jump with him or to stay committed to their hitters because he's a front row setter right now in the 6-6 lefty out of Norway doing a nice job. Fifth in the NCAA in assists per set. All Big West Conference honorable mention selection. Ryan Ka, meanwhile, continuing to drive into those approaches. And Ryan Ka is listed at, listed at 6-3, but he plays much bigger than 6-3. I mean, you look at the bounce for Ryan Ka and then Chaz Galloway on the Hawaii side. We mentioned they played as teammates for the Wave Volleyball Club in San Diego. I mean, just imagine that. Imagine those two guys on the pin on the same side of the net in club volleyball. Just getting way up there. I think there's something in the water in San Diego. <laughs> Maybe. And Wyatt Harrison inserted into the match and right back right now. One point contest here in the second. McCauley threw the triple block and down. It was Tella, Gassman, and Cowell trying to provide resistance to no success. Here's a look at those Wave Volleyball Club days with Ryan Ka and Chaz Galloway. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So the club teammates, now opponents here in this semifinal of the Outrigger Big West Men's Volleyball Championship presented by the Hawaiian Islands. Here's Cowell. Let's not forget about Colton Cowell's jumping ability either off of two feet. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he's pretty impressive. He's got some hops himself. He's worked incredibly hard to get those hops, though I will say Colton Cowell doing a phenomenal job in his transformation from the day he came into the University of Hawaii to now, he's a completely different player. Already has his undergraduate degree in economics. Outside, a dig by Tella on the swing by McCauley, and then knocked over by Worsley. Advantage Triton's backside at Shannon. And that was smoke down the line. Too hot to handle even for Gage. And Gage a little frustrated with himself. He was in the right area, but just a little bit too much heat. Shannon just completely unloading on that ball. 19 <laughs> serving 17, excuse me, Lisa. Puts everything into it. Middle set, Gassman. With the jump dunk. <laughs> One of those slam dunk moves there by the big fella. Continuing to battle out here. He's the first to double figures in kills 
hitting 643. It's a one point contest here in set two. Backside, McCulley through the block, the up by Gasman, diving second touch by Rado. And we play on. Tritons go middle to Bennett, he's blocked by Gasman. Tritons go backside again to McCulley this time. Tella able to chase it down. Worsley high balls it to Rado by the double block. Was there a touch? No touch. It goes long point for the Tritons. And that's a big one as they get to 21st. That's a huge one. And you got to love the efforts. On, again, on both sides of the net, some really great rallies going on, some good blocks, soft touches, some defense. A little bit of everything. Yeah. You see San Diego winning a long one. We saw how important that ended up being for UC Santa Barbara against Long Beach State. They started to accumulate the points in those lengthy rallies in the first semifinal. Pat Gassman, though, raising the level, giving maximum gas. 11 kills, leading everybody. And in a match on a night that so far, you have Rado Potapunov hitting in negative numbers and Colton Cowell at triple zeros. Yeah, that's a rare night for this team. And then Gassman pumps it long. It's those unforced errors that are really putting Hawaii in trouble right now. The little things, keeping that serve in, hitting in, allowing, putting the pressure back on the Tritons. Bennett's on the line. Cowell with the pass. Rotto from off the net, blocked and roof. Ryan Ka getting the main chunk of that. And it is UCSD by three. And how about the body language on the Triton side of the net? Well, yeah, they're, they're building their confidence. They're doing a lot of little things well, and especially with the block. If you can shut down Rado Parapunov, it changes the dynamics across the net. Out serve there by Bennett, though. And that takes some of the pressure off, but Hawaii's still trailing by two. It is Rado going back behind the line. And we know that he can dial up an ace here and there. Let's see if he takes a little bit off. into the net. Rado not quite calibrated in his normal way here so far in this match. Could be a little frustration carrying over from getting blocked this so many times tonight. Started a little rough, hit a few balls out. Here's Shannon. And it's a foot foul. Went long anyway, 65 miles an hour on the gun. But Hawaii needs some points in a hurry if they want to try to turn the tide here in this second set. They lead one set to none. And it's Chaz Galloway. Good serve. What a layout pass by Palma, though. Back row McCulley. And he gets it down. That was Matt Palma delivering a clutch service reception. And then Blake Chris just knowing exactly where McCulley was, setting that bick, which is a really hard ball to stop. So Aloha ball in the second for UCSD to try to even things up here in this semifinal. The last call into the twine. And you know, at that point you start wondering, those little things again on game point, just keeping that serve over and in and trying to set your team up for a good block. Still a Loha ball for the Tritons. Boss knuckleballs it down the line. Outside, McCulley blocked, kept alive by Crisp. So Ka, oh, may have gotten away with a mishandle there. Rado covers the dink by McCulley. Here's Cowell against the double block. Through the fingertips and down, Hawaii within one. Colton Cal using the San Diego block. And Kevin Ring is going to perhaps wisely use a timeout here. Try to end some of this momentum for Hawaii. If the Warriors can somehow twist their way to getting this second set victory, uh, psychologically, that would probably work to their advantage, considering how much Rado and Colton Cowell, at least by their standards, have struggled here so far tonight. Yes, definitely. And that's exactly why Kevin Ring called the timeout, slow his team down. He talks it over with his coaching staff and goes over and approaches 
his team with a little plan, but number one, to slow down the momentum on the Hawaii side of the net. All right, well, good opportunity here to check in with Ryan Kalei Suji. What's up? Yeah, on the Hawaii sideline before the coaches got into the huddle, uh, Colton Kawa really taking time to talk to his team, uh, trying to help to keep them motivated. Also interesting to note, uh, if those of you who are watching home may be thinking the bench for Hawaii looks a lot smaller, uh, that's because there's actually limitations on how many players can be on an active roster come post-tournament playtime. Uh, so some of the other players on the team are actually the ball shaggers. We also see players that are in the stands. Uh, they also are the reason why and help to motivate this team during times. Uh, so that motivation has to come from those players on the benches. Many of the members that currently and that would normally be on the sidelines are actually in the stands or working this game right now. Back over to you guys. That's a really good point. Akua Maramoto, one of the guys who is like the spiritual leader along the bench. There's Elayu Choi, one of the defensive specialists on the team. Yeah, you're exactly right. They lead their team. They're constantly leading the clap when we're back to serve, you know, and they're still encouraging from yeah. way up on, I don't know what row that is, but they are up there in the nosebleed. They're still making their presence felt. It's just to a lesser degree. Well, it wasn't really the normal introduction either, right? They didn't have the anthem in Hawaii Pono. We played before this match. That was done prior to the first semifinal. So the players didn't really go about the same routine and sometimes that can impact, I think, especially guys who are set in their ways, like Colton and Rado, that can sometimes make an influence, right? Absolutely. They've been in here for so many years, they're used to a certain system and a routine. And McCauley on Aloha Ball gets it by a Hawaii triple block. And it is UC San Diego taking set number two. And we are even Steven here in semifinal number two. Get comfy, folks. Well, how gorgeous is that? Look at the sunset off in the distance from the south side of the island of Kauai. We got ourselves a match here, semifinal number two. Top seed Hawaii. And number one ranked in the country, even Steven with fourth seeded in number 14, UC San Diego in the blocking for the Tritons, a big factor. In fact, they're out blocking Hawaii two to one. Six total team blocks compared to three. What else do you see in these match statistics, Lisa? Well, it's pretty close really all the way around. Hawaii, interestingly enough, has more kills than San Diego, but San Diego hitting at a higher percentage. The blocks stand out to me, but everything else is pretty close. Hawaii even out digging San Diego right now, but still lost that set number two. Interesting numbers. Yeah, because it, it almost feels, based on some of the statistics and even just the eye test, San Diego kind of beating Hawaii at its own game, right? Applying pressure from the service line. Obviously very formidable up front with the block at the net, and those are usually the areas that Hawaii achieves success via. Yes, and Hawaii usually from the service line puts on a little bit more pressure. You've noticed them taking a little bit off from the service line because they had some service errors. So when you're taking something off of it, it allows the opponent, San Diego in this case, to pass a little bit more efficiently. So here we go. Fifth meeting this year between these two teams. And we're tied at one set apiece. Logan Clark getting us started here in set number three. Tele goes middle to Gassman, and he lays the smack down. Kill number 12 for Pat Gassman. He's been doing his part. There's no denying that. And their connection has just continued to get better and a lot smoother as, we've, as the season has progressed. Pat Gassman, 16 attempts hitting at 688. Again, incredible numbers. And some of the numbers that have been a little more head scratching. You have Rado through two sets hitting negative 111. Colton Cowell, 071. Uh, that swing goes long from the side of the Tritons. And it is a point for Hawaii. They're up 2 0. And that's what Hawaii needs to do. They just need to stay focused on the little things. Powell again to serve. First touch there by McCauley. Gets the set on the outside, and that one goes off the dome of Jakob Tello. And McCulley immediately reaches around and says, oh, I'm sorry, he needed to apologize, and Jakob Tello got up real quick, but he took one right in the noggin. There you see Kyle McCulley saying, hey, 
Sorry about that. Yeah, that's not usually intended. As Potapunov able to split the uprights of the block. And some good sportsmanship between those two guys a moment ago. That's always good to see. It really is. And I think that these teams both have a lot of respect for one another. Uh, it's pretty obvious it's the fifth meeting. Hawaii opened their non-conference play up at San Diego. And actually, UC San Diego took that first set from Hawaii. Outside, here's Shannon. Dug up by Gassman. It goes off of the big screen above. Diving save on the second touch by Tella. Chance here for the Tritons. Right side, McCauley dug up by Yaka. Cowell goes cross court to Rado. Off the block and down. And that's one of those lengthy rallies that goes the way of Hawaii. And I'll tell you what, lengthy rally hits the top of the dome up here. And Jakob Tella chases it down and does a one-arm set. Beautiful recovery, and then Rado Parapuna using the hands of Colin Shannon. And some moments being taken to wipe perspiration off of the floor. Pat Gassman doubling as a floor wiper, taking on the responsibility himself. Hey, sometimes you want to make sure that floor is clean because these guys are scrambling out there. You do not want to slip and slide. So four serving one here. To start set number three. High toss from Gassman. 62 mile an hour offering there. And then McCauley with some high cheddar there for Rado Parapuno. Kyle McCauley with his 10th kill and 24 attempts with zero errors. Yeah, he showed up as expected. Yeah, he, he continues to do what he does best, and that's get kills and be a six rotation player for his team. Double figure kills in 14 of the previous 16 matches. Already to double figures here. As Cowell from the back row goes off the block and out. Colton Cowell getting his fifth kill. And for what you can get Cowell going a little bit more in his normal range percentage-wise, same with Rado, that changes the complexion of things considerably. It sure does, and Colton Cal, you know, he's got a degree in economics. He knows about numbers. <laughs> he knows he needs to bring them up. There's no doubt about that. Shannon trying to slice that one cross court, but misses it wide. And so Hawaii up four here. And Rado Parapunov, one of the seniors on the team. Into the net. A little off on his serving tonight, definitely. So now Shane Bennett's the 6'6 junior from Santa Clarita, California. Had right, eight kills, four blocks last night in the win over CSUN. And Voss hits it into the twine. So Hawaii victimized by some of their own unforced errors in key moments here. And you know, sometimes they're a little lull in the energy on the Hawaii side of the net. When your leaders, your go-to guys are not getting the kills, the dynamics change. Kali perhaps trying to be too dynamic on that swing from the back row. Missed the block, but missed the floor wide. So Hawaii up three, and Galloway retreats back to serve. But this is truly when the players that have not been the stars, per se, or carrying the heavy loads, have to rise up and take that load upon themselves. Backside, Shannon blocked back by Cowell. Chris goes cross court, Kaz blocked back. They go the other side to Shannon. And how about Blake Crisp, the setter, just moving that Hawaii blocking front from pin to pin on that sequence? Well, if it doesn't work on one side, then you go to the next, and then you go back. You know, the biology major, aspiring surgeon, moving things around. <laughs> oh, that serve goes into the twine. You have Blake Crisp. Said to play the saxophone, the clarinet, the trumpet, and the tuba. So he is a man of many talents, the setter. 
for UC San Diego. There he is. Primarily backed up Connor Walbrecht, who was an All-American setter for UCSD. Decided not to come back despite the free year of eligibility due to the COVID shutdown. As McCauley jumped a little early there. Here's Gassman in the middle block back. The cover there by Galloway. D set goes to Rado. By the double block. Does it go long though? It does. No touch. And there were two San Diego Triton players trying to defend that and they both swung and it was out. Yeah, it looked as though they were in position to maybe play this. It just sort of went by them like the Matrix there. It's not as though they were too intent on getting out of the way. By the way, that was Max Rosenfeld in for Hawaii on that last serve. Tella goes high ball outside to Cowell. And he went up a few extra floors on the elevator that time. Tella has established Pat Gaspin so well that when he decided to go outside to Colton Cowell, he had isolated him with a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Nice by McCauley. He gets the set on the outside. Blasts it long. Was there a touch? No touch. And so McCauley with just his second hitting error of this match. And McCauley really put some heat behind his balls. He just he has a heavy hand, if you will. Here's Tella. Forces the overpass. Gasman dug up by Palma. But unfortunately, McCauley couldn't get it over the net. It was a great job by Palma to just keep that sequence alive. But Hawaii now showing some signs of applying pressure from the service line. They lead by a handful. High school baseball is in full swing. Tomorrow it's an ILH doubleheader with Marinol and Pac-5, followed by Kamehameha and St. Louis, starting at 3.45 p.m. only on Spectrum OC16. Well, Hawaii showing some signs here in the early stages of set three to be riding the ship. We've seen some quality swings from Rado Potapunov as well as Colton Cowell. And you start to wonder because we've actually seen some less than stellar swings from the San Diego side here in this third set to start. You, you begin to wonder if the fatigue factor might be creeping in, but that is pure speculation. Well, I can't agree with you more there. They're currently hitting at 154, and they definitely were challenged last night, and now back-to-back -back turning around and playing the number one team in the nation. And McCauley has it returned to sender. Gassman and Potapunov, biggest block that Hawaii has to offer, and you got to love seeing those veterans. Part of that senior celebration last week, looking at each other with a knowing smile. Side. Here's Shannon, blocked back. Middle set, and that is Logan Clark unleashing. We haven't seen too much of that pop here throughout this tournament so far. Yeah, we haven't seen that connection between Blake Crisp and him, especially on that distance, what they call a three set. But, you know, it's nice to see him going to his middles a little bit more, taking a little bit of pressure off of McCulley. He's been carrying the load for his team with 29 attempts so far. Meanwhile, Gassman continues to put it right on the barrel. He's had 20 attempts so far. Yeah, this is about as active as you will ever see Pat Gassman within the offense. I mean, Charlie Wade, I'm sure, is loving every moment of it, especially the fact that he's hitting 600, but pretty remarkable. And there again, you see Blake Crisp setting into the middle, setting Shane Bennett, one of the tri-captains. <laughs> Great pass by Kyle McCauley. Yeah, that was something else. What are you hitting? 308 in this third set. UC San Diego hit negative 059. Here's Colton out of the back row. Ka, that set a little close to the net. Couldn't quite do anything with it. So Galloway, his former club V-ball teammate, he gets the benefit of the point. 
And Chaz Galloway a little quiet tonight offensively. His fourth kill out of seven attempts. Pat Gasman's getting all of the sets, that's why. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Pat Gasman is in the zone. Although Pat Gasman just got subbed out. And you could see his frustration. He's probably questioning, like, hey, what, why are you taking me out, coach? Well, Max Rosenfeld into the front row. Here's Jackson Van Ekren. Another one of the guys celebrated with the senior group last week. And he comes in and delivers an ace. And that gets Hawaii popping a little bit. Well, it should, because you know what? He's played in seven sets this season so far, and he comes in as a 6'6 redshirt junior and really does a nice job. His first ace of the season. Good timing there. McCauley blocked and roofed. Rosenfeld providing some instant defense. And a timeout called by the Tritons of UC San Diego. Hawaii back on track here in the third. Black Sand Beach over on the Big Island Pohoiki, I believe. Not much like that, that's for sure. Some of the beautiful vistas that we've been sharing with you across the gorgeous Hawaiian Islands. But let's take a look at the Leeward Roofing Roof Report. As we have seen the block come into play for both sides at different stages. Hawaii's starting to turn it on a little bit. Max Rosenfeld getting involved. Five total team blocks for the Rainbow Warriors compared to six for UC San Diego. And Shannon out of the timeout. Delivering some thunder there. Colin Shannon now with six kills and 13 attempts. Just one hitting error for him. He's having a nice offensive night, but the current set for UC San Diego is they're hitting at negative 0-5-0. So what you mean while at 3.33, over the pass there by Gage Worsley, and then Galloway has it turned back. That was Shannon next to Bennett's. Colin Shannon having himself a match here. He really is, and you know, again, San Diego just so disciplined on their blocking schemes. It's almost like textbook. They've really closed it. They're low and tight to the net, and they read the hitters well. McCauley, the overpass by Galloway. They're playing ping pong back and forth after that one-hand dig by Worsley. Here's Ka, tries to go deep corner. Was there a touch? No touch. A point for Hawaii. Every player on the floor for UC San Diego was asking the up official Tony Chan to call the touch. And I think we may have a challenge here from Kevin Ring. Yeah, they were all had their hands up. And Ka always smiling. He's always got that big grin on his face. And Colton Callahan kind of chuckling across the net like, yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, they're both making their... Uh, Opinions known on whether or not there was a touch. So the three blockers going up. Um, I guess the possibilities would be that left hand of Max Rosenfeld. If not, maybe that right hand of Chaz Galloway. No, it doesn't look like Galloway would factor in. So it would be whether or not Rosenfeld got a piece of that. Yeah. It definitely would be, I think, on Rosenfeld, whether he got it or not. And we'll see how long it takes to determine that as Jeopardy plays in the background. <laughs> yeah, they've been uh, using that music file quite a bit here this weekend. But it gives us an opportunity to give a shout out to the University of Hawaii Athletics Department, certainly to this Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center staff, Rich Sheriff and his crew, for being able to put this event on. You know, I think just that the fact that the Big West Conference was able to have this tournament here in Honolulu, and of course the support of Outrigger and certainly the presenting sponsor, Hawaii Tourism Authority, 
There were some concerns shared about bringing the rest of the conference out to the islands as opposed to just singularly flying Hawaii up to the west coast somewhere and relocating the conference tournament somewhere that was a little more accessible under these COVID circumstances. But uh, the commitment had been made and the Big West Conference behind Commissioner Dan Butterly, uh, they stayed true to that and here we are. And I think just the fact that this tournament is taking place in front of us, uh, albeit without fans, that would make it even more perfect. But uh, I think that's an accomplishment unto itself. That's a huge accomplishment. There are so many little things that actually had to happen for this event to take place. After the review, no touch. And so the lost challenge there by Kevin Ring. They only have one left to the Tritons. And really, the only person, or maybe people that know if there was truly a touch on that ball, are Max Rosenfeld and Chaz Galloway. Yeah. And again, the touch, no touch review, the most difficult to discern based on the resolution of the video replay that these officials are working with. And so it might not be ideal for Kevin Ring. I'm sure he's not very happy about it, but the official can only go on what the video presents. And I think in that instance, it's just hard to justify concluding that it surely touched Rosenfeld when the call on the floor was that it was no touch. And the block there in the middle by Rosenfeld. There was a touch there. It goes down on the side of the Tritons. And Rosenfeld continues to make things happen. Whenever he comes onto the court, he's always contributing to the team. We have a yellow card being presented to, is that Kevin Ring? Not sure. He's garnering a yellow from the R1, Tony Chan. And Ryan Kaw continues to smile. And there's a look. Tony Chan presenting the yellow. And confusion for Hawaii as well. They're like, what? What happened? What did we miss? Still trying to wait for details on exactly who received that yellow card. Rado serves Hawaii up eight overpass, placed down by Tella. And it's all good right now in this third set for the Rainbow Warriors. And Rado's done a nice job correcting his serve from the back line with a couple of stalls here. After the challenge and after the yellow card, focusing and staying focused on a good serve. Shannon, well, he tried to put a little extra oomph into it, and it worked in his favor, goes off the block and out. All right, so we have clarification on the yellow card. It was actually given to the libero, Matt Palma. Look, on the other side of the net, after the play, he goes ahead and he kicks the ball. And thus received the yellow card from Tony Chan. Well, definitely a little frustrated, and, and thank goodness there's no people in the stands. No harm, no foul, but a yellow card. I would have probably booted it to the top of the arena myself, but, you know. How very Craig Stutzman of you. That's a reference on the football gridiron back in the day for the hardcore UH football fans. Well, it's the competitor and the athlete, right? You get a little frustrated, you're bootable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can understand the frustration in this third set for sure. San Diego was feeling very good about itself coming out of set number two, and then the wheels kind of coming off here in this third set. So they have to somehow put the pieces back together here moving forward as Kawa blasted off the high hands. Good guardianship of the back line there by McCulley. Ka couldn't put everything on it. Here's Rado off of the set from Worsley and Rado Potapunov starting to show signs of finding the range. Yeah, Rado 
knowing that Gage Worsley is going to set him. He's got a three-man block on him, and he just goes high, deep corner. Nine kills for Rado. He's back at triple zeros. Backside here, Shannon, the touch, diving save, Galloway. Tella also hit the floor, and I think was more worried about just not colliding with his teammate, and probably a good idea there, considering the scoreboard. Definitely, and Shannon has been unloading left and right, just swinging away as hard as he can. So a good opportunity for him to change things up. That's his ninth kill, hitting at 438 right now. Here's Ryan Kaugh. The high toss down the line and in. That's an ace. And that's how you start to turn the tide. They might be thinking as much about the momentum building to set four as they are in trying to work their way back into this set three. And there you see him going on the inside out serve. He tosses to the inside of his body and then turns it back to the line. Tella, middle to Gassman. Pat Gassman is on some kind of roll here. 14 kills. He's in the UC state, remember? <laughs> Unconscious state. His connection with Jakob Tella has been really spot on from the get-go of this match. A reminder of season high, 17, which came against Long Beach State on April 3rd. Pat Gassman already with 14 here in this one. Backside set from Tella Dorado, some high cheese down the line, but it was saved by Wyatt Harrison, and then Hawaii gets the point on that play at the net. Wyatt Harrison conjuring up quite the shoulder save there earlier in the sequence. Yeah, he took one for the team, that's definitely for sure. And Andrew Boyle, a 6'3 fr freshman coming in to relieve Blake Crisp for setting duties. Rado Potapunov now into double figures in kills for the 22nd straight match going back to last year. And give the point to Hawaii. Jakob Tello with the ace. And the Rainbow Warriors are up double digits here in the third. It's Aloha Ball for set three. It is their eighth service ace. Pass by Palma. Outside set, McCauley. Goes off of Rado and out. I mean, the swings in this match, though. With Hawaii taking the first set 25-22. It was pretty tightly contested for the most part, but Hawaii didn't exactly look like they were too pressured. And then in set two, you see San Diego flipping the script. And they had Hawaii reeling in stretches of that set. Here in the third, Rainbow Warriors all good right now. Rado, however... Gets root. And that set for Rado a little too low, a little too tight. Not a lot of places for him to go. And Andrew Boyle, one of the guys out there along with Bennett's. So as you alluded to, the insertion of Boyle as the setter, and he supplies some blocking help immediately. High ball goes to Rado. Still a low ball for Hawaii in the third. And he's able to put the finishing touches on a set three victory. 25-16, Rainbow Warriors taking a two sets to one advantage in semifinal number two. Celebrate how local people in various walks of life have responded to COVID-19 with Aloha on the next Outside Hawaii Sunday night at six, exclusively on Spectrum OC16. Oh, Hawaii was able to get back on track in that third set. Rado Potapunov still not hitting for a percentage that is in his standard range, but he does have 11 kills, double-figure kills for the 22nd straight match going back to last year. Yeah, Rado Potapunov, again, the lefty just annihilating some balls. Got off to a little rough start, if you will, not only from hitting, but also from the service line. But again, an athlete like him, he is going to self-correct, and he he is. He's riding the ship right now. Yeah, it's hard to keep a guy like that down for long. And what you're winning that third set, 25-16. UC San Diego hit 0-34 as a team 
in the third. Hawaii hit 333. What was the turnaround, you think? Because there were some stretches in that second set where Hawaii looked pretty off kilter. They really did. But I think what happened is Hawaii's block got going a little bit and they dug a few more balls. Uh, I think a little bit of fatigue has settled into the Triton squad. I think, you know, they're battling. They're playing on a lot of emotion. They've uh, made it to this semifinal match against the number one seed team. And they're, you know, they're just going to continue to battle and try to score as much as they can and play as best as they can. They are coach. Kevin Ring is very adamant about creating opportunities to score points with his team. Well, the winner takes on UC Santa Barbara tomorrow night in the tournament championship match. And the Tritons going back to their original starting lineup. Gaucho is taking down Long Beach State, ending their official reign as the two-time defending national champs. Good up there by Galloway as we get set four underway. Cowell is dug up by Ka along the back line. Shannon tries to avoid the block, sails it long. What an unbelievable dig by Chaz Galloway in the backcourt, just playing disciplined defense, sitting down, and actually almost a double scoop. His hands weren't even really truly together on that dig. Here we take a look at it. You see his hands just popping that ball up nice and low. And getting ready to attack the Bic. He was ready. And serving zero. Outside, McCauley dug up by Tella twice, uh, tight to the net. Hawaii keeping it alive, and they're going to call a miss hit against Gassman there. And I think Gassman took a little offense to that. Yeah, like, oh, come on, guys. Usually when middle blockers go to set, everybody in the crowd kind of goes, but Gassman, you know, he's having fun tonight. He's having a great night so far. We've said it time and time again. He would love to be a six rotation player. There's Cowell. Two hands it over. Diving save by Palma. Roll shot. Shannon drops to the floor. And Shannon has done that shot now a couple of times. It's been very effective because you have two Hawaii players coming in after that ball and they almost stop in fear of collision. So it is UC San Diego up early here in the fourth. Crisp serves it into the net. Crisp, just such an interesting story. You know, he really wasn't doing a lot of setting, and then all of a sudden this year he's thrown into being, he was a backup. Setter, and all of a sudden he's running the offense in a 5-1. Oh, and that was a hammer drop by Bennett's off of the set from Crisp. Yeah, Blake Crisp is interesting because you look at him and, and he wouldn't necessarily be the first guy on the floor that you'd pick to say, all right, he's, he's the starting setter for a Division I major conference semifinalist, right? But he has played really well, and he just has incredible instincts, incredible hands. And those they instincts. Have a violation called against Hawaii. Those instincts and those hands maybe are why he wants to become a surgeon. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would apply to that field as well, yeah. You know, the biology major, uh, very talented. He is the floor captain as well. He's been impressive every time we've seen this Tritons team in action. And it's been quite a few times here this season. Rado, the tip, covered by Shannon. Chris, back row set to McCauley. The tape slowed that one down. So Cowell eyeballs it to Galloway down the line. Chris with the up. Back bump set from Palma to Ka. Galloway there on the save. Cowell from behind the line, off the net, was still able to go block and down. And an interesting play there by Colton Cowell and Jakob Tella. Not a true big play, but out of the left back, Colton Cowell audibilizing for that hit. Smart play. Seventh kill on the evening. Backside. 
And Galloway had that block, but it goes out. He was in position. And Blake Crisp getting Colin Shannon an opportunity of a one-on-one. -on -one. Chaz Galloway right on that. There's too much pop from Shannon. Tella backside, here's Rado, two blockers up, down the line and wide. Looked like Rado was going for some hands there. Just missing them wide. Here's Bennett's. Tickles the tape there on the serve. Middle set, it's Rosenfeld. <laughs> Rosenfeld again. It's just efficiency personified. This is a guy who entered this match hitting 676 on the year. He doesn't register enough attempts to be considered for one of the top hitting percentages in the conference, but when you just look at per capita, what he accomplishes in his time out there, it's pretty incredible. It really is, and he continues to come in off of the bench and, and contribute, and you know, the greatness of that is that Coach Charlie Wade and them have some depth in the middle. Oftentimes when you have to bring somebody in, they don't maybe contribute as much, but he constantly makes himself noticed and in, definitely an impact player. And key future piece for this Hawaii team in that middle position, Galloway. And he is up in the stratosphere on that approach. He was talking about why he likes hitting the bit, which this is not the bit, but just in comparison, is because he feels like he can hang up there and see the whole court, and he can. I mean, he's just phenomenal on the leaping ability. Yeah, incredibly gifted athlete. Well, trailing by two, speaking of big sets, there's McCauley from the back row. And McCulley doing a nice job again, just carrying the load. 36 attempts so far, 13 kills. Ryan Cobb back to serve, coming in and replacing Wyatt Harrison earlier in the season, who went down with a severe ankle sprain. Good pass there by Galloway. Outside it goes to Cowell, had to readjust the approach. I think he was expecting a quicker set to the pin, but he still made it work tooling the block. Yeah, that, that happens. It's like when there's a good pass, oftentimes setters will up the tempo a little bit. They'll try to make it a little quicker, but Colton Cowell showing his athleticism. Rosenfeld with the serve, it's a good one. Great pass by Palma. And then McCauley trying to unleash two-hand save Galloway. Cowell against the double block. That was smoking. And Hawaii within one. And Colton Cowell getting on the right track offensively. Started out a little slow as well. Hitting with nine kills at 250 right now. Seven serving eight. Outside McCauley, just one blocker against him, but he tries to go line and misses the floor wide, and so Hawaii has fought its way back even here in the fourth. And a lot of that stemming from the service line, doing a nice job, again, putting pressure on the Tritons to pass. Rosenfeld tried to give him a little bit more on that one, 66 miles per hour on the gun, but it sails out. And again, Hawaii staying very shallow on this jump float served by Logan Clark. Tella, high ball outside, Cowell able to get it down. So they're trading blows here in many respects. In this fourth set, you see San Diego realizing its season is on the line. Definitely, and they're going to have to give it everything that they've got in this fourth set. Hawaii a little bit fresher, if you will, getting the bye into this semifinal match. And you punch a ticket to the championship match as we got a bump kill on the UC San Diego side of the net. It just went over. No Hawaii players played it. And that can be a changer of a game. It's actually considered a free ball when you really think about that. 
waiting for the 1-2-3 system. Oh, Ryan Kaw there, and then Gassman dunks it into the twine. So again, we have seen Hawaii dip into and out of that sort of rhythmic dance that we tend to see when they're playing well on their side of the net. 11 serving nine, crisp with the serve, and Hawaii out of system. Worsley highballs it to Rado, played off the block by Gassman, back to Rado, and he's able to find the floor. Galloway slipping on the Terraflex amid that play. And Coach Charlie Wade getting up and saying, hey, we need, we need a floor wipe here, and that's so important because the floor does get wet, and injuries, you know, unfortunately can happen that way if you don't slow down a little bit and wipe up that floor. Somehow there's water or perspiration on the floor. And that's the last thing anybody needs at this stage of the year is for an inadvertent slip and somebody getting hurt. Colton Cowell, just like he planned it, right? Off the tape and down for an ace. Yeah, well, he really went for that one. He, great toss, feet right underneath him, and he really ripped that ball. Got a little lucky, kicking the top of the tape. Ninth service ace for Hawaii. This time he pulls the string, covered by McCulley. Middle set goes to Bennett's. And he's able to get it down. Mixing up the serve oftentimes is super important as well. But Bennett's doing a nice job. Great connection with Blake Crisp running that offense. Into the net from McCulley. So again, UCSB awaiting the winner of this one. And the plot has thickened a little bit for the Big West Conference. UCLA losing in the MPSF semifinals to Pepperdine. And that throws a little bit more of a wrench into the possible at-large scenarios when it comes to NCAA tournament selection. Just putting that into the ether there as Rosenfeld. Spot duty, it doesn't matter. This guy still gets it done. Solo stuff in the middle of it all against Bennett's. And you see the celebration there from Rosenfeld as well as Rado Parapunov and the entire team. And Hawaii in front. Outside Ka up on boosters, unable to get it down though. Kawa with the back set to Galloway. Okay, pin hitter to pin hitter. And that just shows court, court awareness by Colton Cal, knowing exactly where Chaz Galloway is. Beautiful back set. Yeah, that was well done. That was what makes him such a valuable piece. And we saw it in the first match of this evening with the return of Roy McFarlane to the lineup for UC Santa Barbara. Even though he was playing on a bit of a gimpy knee, you take one of those major pieces out of the equation, it changes the game. Right now, Hawaii up three. And there's the scenario, Hawaii of two sets to one, up by three in the fourth, as you take a look at an aerial view of the Makapu'u Lighthouse. But inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, Hawaii putting itself in position to possibly put this thing away thanks to some of the exploits of Colton Powell. He's got 10 kills, so double figures again for the 10th time this season. But he's done it in a multitude of ways, Lisa. He truly has. He is that true sixth rotation player from the front row, backcourt, blocking, serving, and actually bump back setting. <laughs> uh, a total team player, always going 110%. I mean, taking nothing away from the depth of this Hawaii team, but you've seen in instances where Chaz Galloway's unavailable, say out injured or sick, or Colton Cowell has been unavailable, like on night two against Long Beach State, and it's just different. Uh, there is a reason why that is your starting rotation, and particularly for a guy like Colton Cowell, who's able to impact the match in so many different varieties. Exactly, and he's such a key factor to the glue of this team. Just on this, this first contact, that first pass that he does so well. The layout saved by McCauley, but then the roof. Rado on 
on the edge next to Rosenfeld, and they just put up the wall. And I think that's really where Hawaii gets their energy and their, I don't know, they just thrive off of the block. When they do that, it seems like everything starts to tip. It's now eight and a half total team blocks for the Rainbow Warriors. And back to the team chemistry, the only position that I truly see things changing or where the glue, you have the key components on teams, but when you take out one of those key components, the primary passers or what they call a six rotation player, things can really change drastically. So Adapunov will serve, what you're hitting 333 here. And this third set compared to 263 for UC San Diego. Colorado hasn't had necessarily his A game. Still has 12 kills. You can turn it on almost like a light switch from time to time. It feels. Tell the D set against three blockers. Potapunov is roofed. I mean, they've just been targeting him defensively. They really have, and that's the thing is that most teams coming in in this conference because they only stayed within conference play this year and again this is the fifth time they've played they know where that ball is going to go that's 32 attempts for rado parapuna shining serve pass by worsley tella tried to go over on two couldn't quite put a lot of emphasis on it worsley the save there on the touch shot by shannon here's galloway off the block kept alive by palma quick Pin set there to Ka, and he breaks it off the block and out. And Andrew Boyle is doing a nice job setting the offense here on that last play. Did a nice soft block. The 6'3 freshman stepping in and making things happen. And look at UCSD back within one. Putting up quite the fight here in this second semifinal. Tella, back row set, Cowell, high off the block, chase down. Beyond the end line by McCulley. Here's Ka from off the net, dug up by Cowell. Tella, outside to Galloway, two blockers up, and the save by Palma. McCulley from the back row, block out a good chunk that time. So Tella plays it the other way to Galloway, soars up above the block and dinks it down. So many firearms going off here, just fireworks everywhere, and then a great play by Galloway to slow it up and do the tip shot after bombing away left and right. Seeing Colin Shannon way back, holding on defense. The benefit of being able to hover for an extra nanosecond or two. Yeah, he he's just continues to get better and better as the season progresses. Galloway with seven kills in 16 attempts. <laughs> by two. Middle set. Clark able to get it down. Powell, tough angle. And we go back and forth over the net a couple of times and put over on the second touch by Andrew Boyle. Pulled that one out of his sleeve at just the right time. And Boyle, just an unknown, really. I don't think that Hawaii really expected him to jump and dump Colton Cowell. That was his assignment. Stay with the setter. He's a front row player. Oh boy. Played only 12 sets prior to tonight. That was some high speed there from Ka. Forces a free ball over the net. Set goes to McCauley through the block and down. And we are even at 17 in the fourth. The Tritons aren't ready to leave Honolulu just yet. They're really not, and that was a thunderous attack by McCulley. I mean, you could just hear him hit that ball. Seventeen all. And Ka. That one hit 65 on the radar gun and was too hot to handle. May have been an out ball, possibly but it goes off of Galloway and out. UCSD up one. Time out, Hawaii.
So it is UC San Diego up one here in the fourth. They're looking to push this to a fifth as you traverse along the shoreline on the north shore of Oahu. Colin Shannon, 11 kills, Lisa. He's hitting a fat 429. And this senior leaving it all out there on the floor in what could be if they do not come out of here victorious his final match as a triton well that's exactly what you want to do these players all came in knowing especially the seniors the urgency the sense of urgency and what they needed to do in this matchup oh a missed opportunity there the overpass forced by Cobb, but andrew boyle couldn't time his attempt at it Hits it into the twine, and that kind of lets Hawaii off of the hook there. It really does, and I hate to say it, but that's a freshman mistake. Absolutely. He just got a little hungry, and uh, you got to give him credit. He was swinging for it. Tritons with eight service aces. A season high for service aces allowed by Hawaii as Clark bounces it off of the Terraflex. And UCSD back up one. Some of the statistical anomalies, they include the aces allowed. Hawaii with 10 aces on its side, it should be said, as well. Rado Parapunov, 12 hitting errors. That ties a career high. Previously reached that number twice. Both of those times were in five set matches. Pass tight to the net. Tritons with the advantage here. High ball goes to McCauley, pumps it long. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. And you know, it looked like McCauley knew exactly, obviously he did, exactly what he was doing on that. A little bit of a trap set for him. It shows his experience, his veteran leadership, if you will. Bryce Curtis with the serve. First touch there by Cowell. Gets the set on the outside through the block and a much needed point for the Rainbow Warriors. So Colton Cowell steadily bettering his numbers here throughout the match. That is his 11th kill and he's starting to approach 300. And again, Colton Cowell just continues to keep his team on task. Hitting 286 to be precise on 28 swings. Hawaii within one. They do not want this to go to a fifth. They definitely do not want this to go to a fifth. And on the other side of the net, they really want <laughs> yeah, this to go to a fifth. Yeah, they need it to go fifth. to a fifth. And that'll help the cause. Bennett's getting it down past Tella. And that's exactly what you want to see in playoff competition, don't you? You want to see them competing. The teams, you know, going at it hard, battling, playing their hopefully some of their best volleyball. Yeah, you get the sense of that desperation from UCSD. Their season on the line. Back set goes to Cowell off the double block and down. And he lets out a roar in response to that one. He hit that ball with so much authority. He's playing just with so much confidence right now as well. 20 serving 21. Getting into the nitty gritty of this fourth set. Good serve, forces the overpass. Galloway gets it down. Mahalo Nui Loa. And again, from the service line, making things happen. Colton Kelp unloading on that serve, and Chaz Galloway saying, thank you very much. Exactly. It works as well as an ace. Especially when you have someone like Galloway able to finish the deal. You see the fist bump there. Cowell and Galloway helping each other out on that sequence. Let's check in with Ryan. Thanks, Gunnar. Well, in the previous timeout, those two individuals you talked about, Chaz Galloway and Colton Cowell, actually spent time talking with Josh Walker, the assistant coach for Hawaii, no doubt talking about what's available for the outside hitters. And Colton Cowell actually taking some time to also talk specifically to Chaz Galloway after. And theirs is a unique relationship. Chaz Galloway says that Colton Cowell has taken him under his wing during his career here at UH and attributes a lot of his success to the mentorship that he has gotten from Colton Cowell over these past few years. The two of them definitely look looking to come up big as the match continues on. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Pretty good wing to be taken under if you're Chaz Galloway. And I think his connection with Josh Walker, similar style players at the outside hitter position. 
I think that that bodes well for Chaz Galloway and his development as well. That's right. There you take a look at assistant coach Josh Walker, who was had a great career here at the University of Hawaii playing volleyball. He was the 2019 AVCA Award National Associate Coach of the Year. He's been with the program now for six years. It's often nice to recognize the assistant coaches were always so focused on the head coaches, but the assistants yeah. do so much behind the scenes work, him and Milan Zarkovic. Yeah, and you know, Charlie Wade can be pretty intense. I think we all know that. Milan Zarkovic, I mean, he wears his emotion on his sleeve. There's no doubt about that. But Josh Walker, interestingly enough, he's sort of the calm factor, right? He's, 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 the, he's the cooler head, if you will, more consistently, I would say. So it's a, it's a fun combination when you think about the personalities on this staff. It's very complimentary. Josh Walker is definitely the mellow one of the group. 21 serving 21. You see the Hawaii bench trying to urge the players on the floor to finish the deal. McCulley blasts it off the block. The cover by Tella. Cowell sets up Galloway through the block. Punched up in the air by Boyle. Chased down by Palma. And a free chance here for Hawaii. Tella middle to Gassman. <laughs> But a net violation against the Tritons gives the point to Hawaii. It looked for a moment like Gasman was the one that came into the twine. It really did look like Gasman went into the twine. He had a guilty as heck look on his face. But actually, on this replay, it looks like Colin Shannon was the one who went into the twine. Definitely was. Fourth lead change of this fourth set, and Cowell serves it into the net. A little drama here as we approach the conclusion of set four. And it's literally a game to three. Yeah. Starting from scratch. And if you're UCSD, you love the fact that you have this guy behind the service line. Kyle McCauley. Case in point. Well, that's a first. You didn't botch it. <laughs> yeah, it worked the other way. <laughs> The fourth service ace of the match for McCauley. And you know, he comes in and he's very cool, calm, and collected. He doesn't go into this massive over-celebration. Just showing his experience, his leadership. Yeah, we talked about it a little last night. The facial expression never really changes. Whereas Ryan Ka is always smiling. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're so... Look, there's Ryan Koss smiling again. Just so happy to be out there and included. Whereas McCauley just sort of has the look like, eh, what are we doing later? Yeah. It's no big deal. Exactly. And here's a look at some of the highlights from Kyle McCauley. 16 kills on 43 attacks, hitting 233. He's got eight digs, so closing in on a double-double performance as well. But the four aces, especially that last one, Looming large as UCSD is up here late in the fourth. And I believe that's his career high, uh, four aces. Earlier in the season, he had three aces against CSUN, so setting some of his own personal records as well. Yeah, had three aces last night against CSUN. There you go. Also had that double-double with 18 kills and a career high 12 digs, so he's fulfilling his promise of being the leader and the primary for this Triton squad. It's going to be interesting to see how he comes back and serves after this timeout. No pressure. Nine service aces for UC San Diego. Again, that is a season high for aces allowed this year by the Warriors. Also being out blocked by UCSD. Hawaii averaging over a block more per game as a team than the Tritons. So again, some of the statistics here tonight against the grain, so to speak. Definitely against the grain of what Hawaii has done so far this season. Well, that's what playoff volleyball is all about as McCulley 
Sends it deep that time. First touch, Cowell. Here's Rotto against three blockers. Got blocked. Worsley the cover. Middle set, Gassman popped up by Palma. McCulley sets up Cobb. Three blockers up, and he works it to his advantage. And he is pumped up. Tritons have a Aloha ball in the fourth to push it to a fifth. And, you know, you almost hold your breath when Ryan Call goes to swing against three blockers right there. But he just swings away. He has absolutely no fear. 24 serving 22. Worsley coming up with the pass. Galloway off the block and out in Hawaii. Staying afloat here in the fourth. And Chaz Galloway doing an awesome job on the outside, swinging away high and hard into the block. Pat Gassman to serve. It is still Aloha ball for set four. Overpass. Rado couldn't get it down. Advantage UCSD. Ka! He does! And we are moving on to a decisive fifth set here in semifinal number two. UC San Diego hoping to shock the nation. Set five coming up. Well, when you need to take a little breather here in a match that is coming down to the nitty gritty, how about a vista? That includes the West Maui mountain range. Also a look at Kapalua over there on the Valley Isle. Take in the serenity because things are about to get crazy here at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Ryan Ka with eight kills, hitting 174. Hasn't been a dominant performance by any stretch, but he has been making plays at very opportune times including from the service line and I think the emotion that he brings you see the ear-to-ear -ear smile you see some of the fist pumping and the roaring and that has been something that has pushed this Tritons team to maintain here and try to grind this upset out absolutely very timely in his kills that he has achieved tonight they have been critical for his team at critical times huge in that last set Three service aces, three blocks. And so here we go. Hawaii, unbeaten, number one in the country. Top seed in this tournament on their home floor, going to a fifth. You can throw all the statistics out the window. Now it is a race to 15 and a spot to play Rick McLaughlin's UC Santa Barbara team in tomorrow's championship match. And trust me, he's sitting there going, well, which team am I truly scouting? I've sat here and watched four matches. Four sets, excuse me, and we still don't know who we're going to play against. But again, these teams have all seen each other, and they're all just starting to play some of the best volleyball of the season. You see San Diego two and two in five set matches this year. It's the first time that these two teams will go five against one another. What he has a five set victory against Long Beach State on its resume also a five set victory against uc irvine that was a tight one back on april 16th first of a back-to-back -back. on senior weekend it was 15 13 in the fifth well we were questioning whether or not uc san diego would be able to muster the energy and the legs to maintain throughout a lengthy match tonight they clearly have proven that they have that capability we play into the fifth Outside, McCulley by the double block, off of Tella and out, and the Tritons strike first. And interestingly enough, Andrew Boyle has stayed in. The 6'3 freshman has come in and replaced Blake Crisp for San Diego early in the fourth set. And he will serve. You see San Diego looking to shock the nation, and Galloway unable to control that pass. It is an ace for Boyle. It is 2-0 UCSD. And Boyle doing a jump float, so Hawaii coming up shorter on the receiving end. 
whenever there's a jump float, they kind of move into the court and leave a lot of the back court open. I wouldn't be surprised if Gage Worsley tries to scoot over a little bit more and help Chaz Galloway with this first contact. And Hoyle into the net. And Hawaii gets off the schneid. Well, this Rainbow Warrior team has been there, done that. This nucleus of veterans has been through some bitter battles, some lengthy marathon matches. But do they feel any sense of pressure or tightness in this situation? That is the question. And if so, how do they deal with it? High ball bump set goes to McCulley. Loops it over. Chance here for Hawaii. And again, missed time there. They blow the transition. Chance for the Tritons. The dink diving save. Tella joust at the net. Rattled around. Kyle will slap it across. Tella, middle set. Gassman lays the smack down, and we're tied at two. And if Jakob Tella continues to go to Patrick Gassman like he did early on in this match, things can turn around for Hawaii. Patrick Gassman has just been unloading in the middle. That's his 16th kill. One off of his career high. Hitting 560. Colton Cowell to serve. Pass tight to the net. One hand set. Slapped over by McCulley. Here's Galloway from off the net. And that's going to wind up a Hawaii point. And one of those broken plays. Chaz Galloway just doing a good job keeping that ball in play. Three serving two. I mean, you can feel the tension even without fans. And Colton Cowell with a sinker falling off the table and delivering the ace. And Hawaii is up two, four serving two. Timeout, UC San Diego. The Haleakala Hammer coming up big. Welcome back. The scenario is this. We are into a fifth set. Hawaii up 4-2. The Rainbow Warriors top ranked, undefeated, hosting this Outrigger Big West Men's Volleyball Championship presented by the Hawaiian Islands. Let's check in with James Anastasiadis. You played, you, you have played with this group. You have been through a lot of the battles with them. What is the sense that you get as far as the mood in the huddle for Hawaii right now? Well, you know, thankfully, Hawaii's been in this situation a lot this season. They've gone three matches to five games. And I'm going to quote Rattle Power Punoff on this one. The great players show when there's pressure. And that's where he thrives. Rado believes that he thrives under pressure. So I think we're going to see a little flip of the script on Rado Parapunov. But Hawaii keeping their composure here in this pressured set is going to be very vital going moving forward. Back to you. Appreciate it, James. McCauley back behind the line after putting UCSD within one. He's got 18 kills. And I think James is right on it. They really just need to keep their composure and remember what they've done so far this season and to stay confident in their skills and their capabilities. 11 service aces for Hawaii. That's a season high. McCauley the serve into the net. Every point so pressure packed, so anxiety filled, so important. And Jeremy Voss playing in this fifth set. Uh, we saw Max Rosenfeld in the set four, but Hawaii going back to Voss. Brad Gassman, the high toss. Passes on the money. Outside set, Ka, and the block had not formed. It was Voss trying to book it to the pin to join forces with Rado, but. Again, that fast offense and Ka flying in, able to take advantage. Yeah, Andrew Boyle actually sets a, a little bit of a quicker offense than Blake Crisp was running earlier. Hawaii up one, backside. Here's Rado over the double block and down. Well, you heard James talking about Rado, saying that the pressure packed moments, that's when the elite players are expected to step up. And at least on that moment right there, Potapunov delivers. 
They definitely do. They rise to the occasion when pressure is put upon them. And that serve, 64 miles an hour. Ka on the set from McCulley. Couldn't put everything into it. Dug up by Worsley. Here's Galloway, the dink, snipped out by Boyle. High ball set, Ka, two blockers up. He sends it long. Was there a touch? No touch. And a point for Hawaii. They're up three. Ka thought that that was in, but the line judge called it out. And I don't see much in the way of disagreement around the floor. It looked out definitely from where we're sitting, Kanoa. Seven serving four. That's a good serve. 66 miles an hour. Here's Ka against the double block. They got a piece, but not enough. Ryan Ka now into double figures. He has 10 put downs. Ryan Ka continues to impress the 6'3 redshirt sophomore. Only played in six matches last year. Here's Shannon. Pass by Cowell over the net. We got a joust up there between Tella and Ka. Now Ka is going to relocate, get the swing, dug up by Rado. We're going to have a net violation against Hawaii. A point for UC San Diego. They're within one here in the fifth. And Charlie Wade questioning the down ref. Are we going to have a challenge? Yes, we will. Possibility that Charlie Wade is going to challenge whether or not there was in fact a net violation Unless there's something else he saw on the sequence Definitely unsure of what he's challenging here But All right, so it sounds as though the word we're getting Charlie Wade's gonna challenge a foot foul on the serve. That was Colin Shannon at the service line. And Colin Shannon has been known to toss that way out in front of him. And there you see his left foot pretty, oh. pretty close to the line. And again, if you touch that line with your foot, it's considered a foot fault. That might be just a hair of green between that end line and the tip of that shoe enough so that there is no foot foul called failed challenge by charlie wade and you six could, serving seven you could see where charlie wade's standing that he may actually assume that that there was a foot fall on that last serve here it comes again from shannon tickles the tape the pass by galloway he gets the set on the outside off the block and out Chaz Galloway loves the challenge. As he rotates into the backcourt. Eight serving six. Galloway, good serve there. Outside, Ka, cross court dug up by Worsley. We're going to have a battle atop the tape. And it's going to be a double hit called against Hawaii. So a point for UC San Diego. That was Tella going up there to try to salvage a set. We're going to say there was a miss hit in the process. Yeah, and there was some, could have been a violation of them trying to attack the blockers trying to attack Tella, but you're not going to reverse that call. Oh, heated serve there by Ka. Battle at the net. Tella got a good chunk, so Hawaii plays it back. Cowell unloads, and he smacks it up against that end line. And that's a beautiful set by Jakob Tella. Just gorgeous to the outside there. Colton Cal just hammering that ball. Remember those low hitting numbers for Cowell earlier in the match? He now has 13 put downs, hitting 333. Nine serving seven. Guilherme Voss sends it over. Middle set, and that is Clark. And Clark not getting a lot of opportunities in the middle, but that's a big one for him tonight. Six kills in eight attempts. And 
Here is Bryce Curtis. Pass by Galloway. It's a good one. Tella goes middle to Gassman. He's blocked. He plays it up tight to the net. And I think we're going to have a double hit called against Gassman. And that's exactly what the call is. And UCSD has rallied to even this up 9-9. And you can see the stress level, even with the mask, on the face of Charlie Wade. You definitely can. It's just a little too close for comfort for Coach Charlie Wade. Look at that pass by G. Sizzles. And then the sizzling hit by Colton Cowell. Well, Colton has become that go-to outlet for Jakob Tella here in this fifth. He has 14 put-downs, and it is Tella to serve. Ten serving nine. So much riding on this fifth set right now for Hawaii fans. And they are feeling a little bit of the pressure. How can they not? It's as tight as it gets. I mean, it's how they deal with that pressure, but you're right. There's no ignoring it. McCauley dug up by Galloway. Tella high balls it to Colton. Blocked, dug up by Worsley, but that'll be a roof against Colton Cowell, and we're tied again. And Hawaii just needs to stay focused on that first contact again. I wonder what he's thinking. Hope McLaughlin, head coach for UCSB, still doesn't know who he's playing tomorrow night for the conference tournament championship. Tella, backside, here's Cowell against a double block. He's roofed. And the Tritons are up one. And Colton Cowell going all out on that, but Kyle McCauley low and tight to the net. I've been incredibly impressed with San Diego's blocking schemes tonight. Very disciplined. Boyle, the serve, two-hand pass, Galloway, chase down, bump set, Tella goes to Rado, and he is able to get an out-of-system kill when Hawaii needed it the most, and we're tied at 11. And very much needed, Rado Parapunov. It's time for him to shine right now. We got a game to four. 11, serving 11. Not sure how many people predicted that we'd be in this situation here in this second semifinal. Shannon against the double block. Good up there by Worsley. Backside set, Rado through the double block. What a save by Palma. Outside, Shannon touches it over the net. Diving save, Gassman, and then Shannon pounds it down. It almost looked like there was a net violation on that play. But obviously, there's not one being called. How about the effort on both sides of the net? Libero's sprawling out. Saves. An exquisite defense being exhibited in all areas. Timeout. All right, so here's a little view for those whose heart is racing at home watching this match. I know our hearts are racing announcing this match. Yes, this has been a wild ride here. Back and forth battle. Hawaii taking the first, San Diego taking the second, Hawaii winning the third, UCSD winning the fourth, and they're up 12-11. And that look on Rado's face kind of says it all. The Rainbow Warriors, I don't think, expected to be in this position. The fifth time these two teams have faced off this season. The advantage belongs to the Tritons. McCauley with the serve. Pass by Cowell. It's an overpass. Oh, but it's botched by Bennett's on the reception. And now Hawaii has it. Here's Rado against the double block. The swiping save by Palma. Call from off the net. Easy pickings there on the save by Worsley. Middle set. Gassman gets it down, and we're tied again. Just some unbelievable defense by Matt Palma on the other side of the court. And Hawaii maintaining their composure in a long rally. Palma with nine digs. On the other side, Hawaii's libero Gage Worsley with 13 digs. How about Jakob Tella, double-double performance, 51 assists and 10 digs. Gassman the serve. Palma with the pass. Back row set, McCauley. Cowell with the save, great second touch. Tella, and we play on. 
Outside, Ka against the double block. Is blocked, it's pinballed around. He rolls it over, Cowell with the save. Tella backside, Rado off the block. Galloway hesitated and then played it. They go back to Potapunov. High hands, the save along the back line by McCulley. Tritons with the chance here. Ka from off the net, blocked by Rado. On his knees, Palma keeps it alive. Shannon goes cross court and wide. No touch, point for Hawaii. And that's what it is all about. We're gonna see a challenge here. When you look at some of the players out there on the floor, and they look spent. Having to exert so much energy, not to mention emotion, dealing with the pressure, the stakes that are on the line here. And so this may be a welcomed respite to look at this replay review. Definitely, and these players are giving it their all. Here you see it take slow motion. Colin Shannon swinging as hard as he can. I'm wondering if it's a touch call or whether it's an in or out call. I believe they're challenging the touch there. That's Guilherme Voss. And that replay, I would say, Lisa, it looks like his ring finger got a piece of that. Coming back on his right hand. That's a tough one. And this is huge. It is either 13-12 Hawaii or 13-12 UC San Diego. That's pretty huge in a game to 15. A match that has seen so many twists and turns. I mean, imagine if there was a packed house in here tonight, as you know there would have been. Guaranteed this would have been a sold out crowd. Is there enough in the replay to earn the touch call? There are enough there for Burt Fuller. Again, the call on the floor was no touch. And that's why they bring in refs when it comes down to this, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a neutral court. It's just so hard to tell sometimes. This is a big ruling coming up right here. No touch called. Huge call. 13 serving 12. Wow. As dramatic as a replay review could be. Here it comes from Gassman, Hawaii by one, and he sends it out. The Tritons will claim athletic justice there. However you look at it, we are tied at 13. It is a game to deuces. And Hawaii lines up again, very shallow in their serve receive with their primary passers. Pass by Cowell. That was a tough placement on the serve. Here's Rado, two blockers up, and he's roofed. Blocked by Clark. Ryan Ka was up there as well. And it is Aloha Ball for the match for UC San Diego and Hawaii signals for a timeout. And that play all started from a difficult deep floater serve that Colton Cal took. It was going at Chaz Galloway. And he got out of the way and Colton Cal grabbed it. Jakob Tella sending it back to Rado. And again, UC San Diego's block low and tight. Arapunov with his 13th hitting error and a dubious career high for him achieved in this match. Let's take another look at it. So starting from serve received, going down that line, there you see Galloway goes over him and Colton Cal covering him. Jakob Tella going away from the common serve or set. 
Let's check in with Ryan Kalei Suji. Ryan, what's up? Well, coaching staff and players for Hawaii really animated in that last timeout, of course, trying to figure out what they're going to do coming out of this timeout. Who will their go-to players be? They have three hitters in the front row, but again, it comes down to the passing. Hawaii essentially in a two-man passing formation with Powell and Worsley. They're moving up the passing pattern in hopes that these players will take it overhead and set the ball with more control. Galloway being moved back just a little, but the primary passes for this rotation will be Worsley and Powell. Question is, where does this ball go? Back of you. And when you have this core of Hawaii veteran players, seniors from a year ago who were given the option to come back after the COVID shutdown with a free year of eligibility, and to a man, they all decided to do just that. And part of that was to accomplish the goal of winning a conference championship, knowing they were hosting this conference tournament and also contending and possibly winning a national championship. And so much is thrown into the realm of uncertainty if they do not win here this evening. And it is Aloha Ball for the Tritons. Shane Bennett's the serve. Pass by Cowell. Tella goes backside. Rado against two blockers. And he blows it up. And we're tied at 14. We got deuces here in the fifth. And Rado seeing a little seam there and hitting a little higher than he has earlier in the evening. Rado Punov behind the line. What must be going through his mind right now? It's a good serve, but a great pass. Middle set, Clark. But we're going to have a miss hit on the set. It's a point for Hawaii, and they have Aloha Ball in the fifth. And that's a huge call for Hawaii. Boyle with a double contact, a lift. There you can see, completely uneven. It's a good call. That is tremendous camera work by our Spectrum Sports crew. That net cam coming in clutch as the mishandle on the set by Boyle gives Hawaii the opportunity to close out this match. And the pass from San Diego, the Tritons was spot on. Boyle just getting up there in uneven hands. It's a violation, They've got it's gotta come out clean. It cannot come out spinning like that. I called it that a UFO. An unidentified flying object. <laughs> All right, let's check in with James Anastasiadis. Yeah, well, starting off with San Diego, they are not ready to let this game go. And what a game that they have had here tonight in the Simplify Arena Stan Sheriff Center. Hawaii men's volleyball, all seniors, I do not think are ready to give up what they came back for. And we see they are hustling every point, ready to close out this set. Both teams are playing phenomenally and the game is not done yet it is not still very much in doubt Hawaii needs to get this final point and again the reason why this is so important hey Hawaii has put together a great resume but when you do not make it to the conference tournament championship what you do is you then put your fate as far as earning an at-large berth into the NCAA tournament into the hands of a committee. And whenever that happens in the history of Hawaii sports, it is a setup for oftentimes disappointment. It's a dangerous place to be, that's for sure. <laughs> it's late night for that guy as well. Rick McLaughlin, head coach for UC Santa Barbara. Still not sure who he's playing tomorrow. <laughs> what am I doing here? But here is Rado. I mean, if there's a guy you want behind the service line in this position, in this situation, he's the guy, right? That's for sure. Aloha ball for a spot in the championship. Took something off. Set goes outside, it's Ka, the dink, sniffed out by Voss. Tella, high balls it to Potapunov, off the fingertips of the block. McCauley goes high ball to Ka against three blockers, off the block and out, and we are not done yet here at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. And again, Ka just doing a nice job. A great set by McCauley going up 
and into the hands of a three-man block. And it is Shen, and he has caused Hawaii some problems from the service line. Again, gets him out of system. Galloway has to just touch it over. Chance here for the Tritons. They go outside. It's Ka, and he gets the kill. And it's UCSD again with match point. And there is an indication that there's a need for a floor wipe. Jakob Tella scrambling to get that second contact and then racing back in to become the only blocker up on Ka on that last play. And you have to give these two teams credit. On a night where Hawaii perhaps didn't have its best game, wasn't its sharpest. But you see San Diego, they definitely have been sharp and taking advantage, perhaps, of some of those shortcomings caused by UCSD. Aloha ball for the match. Cowell the pass. Backside, here's Rado against a double block, and he delivers again. How about Jakob Tella? It doesn't matter the situation, doesn't matter the percentage that Rado's hitting. He's going to Potapunov with the match on the line. Well, he's got a lot of confidence in him. He knows he's struggled a little bit tonight, but when push comes to shove, he believes in Rado Parapuna. So we start over. 16, serving 16, Galloway. Outside, Ka. My goodness. He has turned into an assassin out there on the left pin. Amazing. Truly amazing to think that he got the opportunity to get on the court because Harrison got hurt earlier in the season. The Triton serving for the match again and for a spot in the championship. Pass by Galloway is a good one. Tella, backside, Dorado. Lights up Palma, but he comes up with the save. Here's McCauley, the roll shot. Two-hand save, Rado. Bump set, Tella. Cowell has to two-hand it over. He's blocked. And Roof by Boyle. And UCSD has pulled off the stunner. Taking down the previously unbeaten number one team in the country. In a semifinal match on their own home floor. And that is huge. UCSD came into this matchup. And Kevin Ring said, we just want to put ourselves in a position to win. And win they did against long odds. Fifth time was a charm for the Tritons. And for Hawaii, now that sense of disappointment and that fear of uncertainty, what's to come, their fate for a chance at a national championship now out of their hands. Have they done enough to ultimately earn a spot? That becomes the question. Well, I'd have to say yes. They've been ranked number one all, almost all season long. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. Let's take a look. How good was Ryan Ka down the stretch? 14 kills for him, hitting 237, four blocks, five digs, three aces. Pat Gassman was one of the go-tos for Hawaii. 17 kills, hit 519, two blocks, two digs, two aces. All right, let's send it over to Scott Robbs. Coach, well, obviously disappointed. It felt like tonight your team just could not get in rhythm. Yeah, I mean, we were... We're kind of rolling along there. The, the, I think it was the second set. We just, you know, we made 15 errors or something. Then you're pretty, pretty average at that point. We, so, you know, and they're a good team. So we give them one set. And then they made the change at setter in uh, uh, what was the fourth set, right? And they got a little rhythm going. And um, they played really good. I mean, they, d they definitely played great down the stretch. You know, one thing uh, you didn't want to do is leave it in the hands of a committee. Now you will. Do you think your resume is strong enough? Do you, th do you think you guys should get an at-large for the NCAA tournament in two weeks? Yes. That's good enough for me. Hey, Charlie, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, back uh -huh. over to you, Kanoa. I mean, it makes sense. This has been a team that has been at the top of the rankings 
throughout the season, previously unbeaten. I think we can all agree, as great as the Tritons played, this is taking nothing away from them because that was an epic effort. Uh, but this was a Hawaii team that didn't quite have its best thing going here tonight, clearly in this semifinal match. Uh, but Charlie Wade, very demonstrative, saying he feels like they've done enough. You agree, I'm sure, Lisa. That's what you alluded to. I absolutely agree. At 15-1, and one, I cannot imagine that this team doesn't get an at-large bid into the NCAA tournament. And so the, for the first time in the Big West Conference tournament, we're going to have... Two teams not named Hawaii or Long Beach State facing off in the championship. It will be number two, UC Santa Barbara, taking on fourth-seeded UC San Diego for the Big West Marbles tomorrow and an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. Don't forget about the post-game show. There is an awful lot to break down here in the wake of what was a major upset in college volleyball in Manoa tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night. For Lisa Strand, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Aloha from Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. This is the Post Game Show on Spectrum Sports. And thanks a lot for sticking around. It is the Post Game Show. Scott, James, and Ryan. And guys, I, I, all I can think is just, wow. I mean, I, I didn't see that coming. Uh, I think none of us really did, but you got to give a lot of credit to UC San Diego because they played lights out and they uh, they earned that win tonight. Yeah. yeah, San Diego played phenomenal tonight and they played with heart. And I'm here looking at the statistics right now. We'll talk about that way later. But when we when we go over it, it was one of those where it came down to heart and San Diego did not want to let that chance go of making it to that conference tournament for the first time in history, program history. Yeah, and also when you have a player like Rado Parapunov who hits uh, 0.67, obviously uh, that does not bode well for Hawaii when their go-to player, the player that they have really ridden for the, a lot large part of the season, uh, hits like that. Uh, you're going to have some problems, and Hawaii did run into that. Uh, you know, this may sound cliche, and I'm not trying to be that person that makes lemons out you know make finds whatever what is it lemons make out of lemonade, lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> sure whatever <laughs> uh, but you know it, it is uh, to a point where hawaii you know obviously that comes we talked about it at the top of the broadcast it comes with a lot of pressure being undefeated they've got that out of the way they've experienced what it is like to lose and i think that this bitter feeling that they have might actually be good for them at this point well, but we don't know what the future holds. That's the question mark, right? I mean, uh, a lot of people think that Hawaii should get in that large. David Matlin is one of the five committee members on the men's volleyball tournament selection c committee. But there are no guarantees. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah I, I don't think Hawaii wanted to be in this situation because no. looking back on the season in 2017 where their RPI was pretty high, they chose Irvine that they had beaten earlier in the conference tournament to take to the NCAA but I think Kawhi's resume is good enough to earn that at-large bid, but you never want to leave it into the hands of a committee because you never know what's going to happen. And you look at the MPSF, Ryan, and Pepperdine just, I think they swept UCLA today, but they'll play BYU, I assume. So, I mean, those two teams will probably get in, and then there's talk of maybe UCLA, and it, it could be UCLA and Hawaii coming down to another end. Yeah, but if it's between those two teams, I mean, you look at Hawaii's resume. I mean, with I one loss, UCLA has multiple losses this season, some of them not really gr great losses. And so I think that Hawaii will have the advantage going in. I, I, I agree with Charlie Wade. I think Hawaii has done everything that they can do uh, to get that at-large bid. The other factor is, though, uh, where Hawaii is going to be seated in that tournament, that is in that at as an at-large team, they won't be seated uh, as highly, uh, so they may have to be in that play-in game. Who knows where they may end up, which just adds more games to the overall schedule and the championship run. James, let me ask you about UCSD, and you know this was the fifth time these two teams played this season, and, and it seemed like UCSD, they kind of knew what to expect. Well, obviously they did, and they made a lot of adjustments from uh, the four other matches. Yeah, Scott, you're completely right. As UCSD must have created a great scouting report and not only created it, but executed it to the T. They are one of the only teams this year to completely shut down Rattle in a game. And their biggest contribution in this game, I believe, which Hawaii has not faced all year, is that service pressure from the back. Unbelievable serving from UCSD. 
And along with the serving, the relentless defense in the back row, they got so many touches on the blocks yeah, it, and then scrambled to touch everything else to get great swings out of it. Well, let's let's take a look at the final numbers. You mentioned 10 service a aces for UCSD. Hawaii had 11. You look at the hitting percentage way out. Hit UCSD. Uh, Hawaii had more kills. They also had more errors. Blocking advantage, surprisingly, going to the Tritons and Hawaii with the significant advantage in dig. So it, you look at the numbers and it looks like a five set match. Yeah, it, it really does, and, and the numbers really speak to the, for themselves. I mean, 281 is below obviously Hawaii's average, which they've been hitting in the 300s against some of the best teams in the country, and so obviously that is below their percentage. Uh, I think one of the other things that really hurt Hawaii were some of the simple transition plays where Hawaii would have normally scored in nights. Uh, they just could not execute one significant play, and I don't think we can go back there right now, but it, it was when Hawaii was actually in the lead, serving for the match at 14-13. They had a tip ball that they could run transition off of and they could not convert on a tip ball in that situation. Uh, that kind of play should be uh, fairly easily executed and Hawaii could not take advantage of some of those key moments. And those moments happened at critical points throughout the match. Hawaii had multiple opportunities. If you wind the game back to, I, I believe it was set three, Rado Parpunov had an overpass, uh, hit the overpass that was about eight feet off the net. That got dug up and they trans UCSD transitioned to get that point. Plays like that really hurt Hawaii tonight. You know, James, one guy that I thought had a really good match tonight was uh, Pat Gassman. I mean, he was terrific. What do you have? 17 kills. He hit a 519. Unbelievable. Yeah, Patrick Gassman had an amazing night. And the middle position is one of those positions that does go unseen many times. And Pat contributed big on opening up the pins, opening up Rattle, Colton, and Chaz Galloway. But also, he was a huge presence, I think, for UH's not-so-regular blocking night. He got great touches on the block. But like we said, UCSD converted a lot of those transition plays tonight, and they won the transition battle. So Hawaii falls in five. The first time this season they lose, and it comes in the semifinals of the Big West Conference Tournament. We'll take a break. Come back. We'll have more from Manoa. Highlights Hawaii UCSD. We start off with Patrick Gassman in the middle. The big guy had 17 kills on the night, a couple of blocks, and he hit 519 for UH. Got the majority of those early on in the match. On the other side, Kyle McCauley. He is a first team all Big West Conference selection and played like one. McCauley with a team high 18 kills. He also had four service aces. Oh, and threw in 10 digs as well. A double double for McCauley. On the other side, Rado Parapunov, the All American opposite for Hawaii, put down 16 kills, but he also had 13 hitting errors. He only hit 067, his lowest hitting percentage of the season. He also did contribute a couple of blocks for Hawaii. But the guy, the spark plug all night long, Ryan Ka. Ka. 14 kills, hit 237. He had three service aces. He had five digs, four blocks, and he just seemed to be in the right place at the right time every time UCSD needed him. And the Tritons shocked the number one and unbeaten Rainbow Warriors in five. Welcome back to the post game show on Spectrum Sports. So UCSD knocks off Hawaii. They will face UC Santa Barbara in the championship match tomorrow night. You'll see it live right here on Spectrum Sports. And guys, I would imagine that had to be the biggest win in the history of UCSD's program. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, this is a program that has always been on the lower part of the conference standings every single season. They have struggled to get things going. They thought they had a great team and a great run last year. Of course, that was cut short through COVID. They've lost some key players and here they are rebounding, now playing for a chance to win a conference championship. And this is why we have conference championships uh, and these tournaments, because it doesn't necessarily matter what happens in the pre, uh, during the conference season. It was happens during the championships seasons and it's for opportunities like a fourth seeded team to potentially come home with a conference championship it speaks a lot to how well they prepare it and how well they're playing right now well you looked at the brackets keep in mind the winner of tomorrow night's matchup will get the automatic berth from the big west in the ncaa tournament you would think ucsb has the advantage having won in four earlier tonight against long beach state and uc san diego playing in their third night uh, coming off a five set win but it looks like this team doesn't care. They just, they're going to ride the momentum as far as they'll take them. 
Yeah, UCSD came out here tonight and it was all smiles. And it was mentioned a lot during the game, but I couldn't help but notice it myself. Ryan Ka, whether they were losing or winning, that man had the biggest smile on his face and it was awesome to see. It seems like UCSD is on a mission and I'm excited to see what they do tomorrow. You know, right, it's it I'm sorry, it's interesting to note because I think as we look at some of the highlights from Ryan Kaw here tonight, I mean, even in the latter part of that of this match, they were sending Ryan Kaw every ball. There was no doubt where that ball was going to go. And even if Hawaii put up some of their biggest blockers against him, he still found a way to get a kill. I was going to also mention earlier that I think one of the things, the, the pressure now moving into this championship match is on the Gauchos. I mean, they have to win this conference championship tomorrow because if for some reason, San Diego wins. Hawaii has a better resume and will get the at-large bid over Santa Barbara. Uh, now, if Hawaii and Santa Barbara were going into this championship match and let's say Santa Barbara beat Hawaii, uh, they would be in. And of course, and if Hawaii won, Santa Barbara would be that at-large. But even more so now, uh, they have got to win because if San Diego wins, Hawaii will likely be that at-large bid. So you're saying we should root for the Tritons? <laughs> <laughs> should root for the Poles, but that's not happening. You know... should get into We're having a little mic problems here that UH should get the at large so James let me ask you if, if that's the case and they do get the at large what do you take from this loss tonight and does that maybe refocus them get them uh, maybe something get, gets it out of the way yeah, Scott, I think that would definitely refocus them. And it does get that loss that they haven't had all season out of the way. And you can just kind of like scratch it off and move forward. This taught them that there's some things that UH needs to work on. They're not invincible and they're going to come in stronger and harder in the practice gym going into that NCAA tournament. And getting that loss off your belt also relieves a lot of that stress from the outside sources and it lets you focus in and dial in on the end goal, which is that national championship. You know, the team has been saying all the right things, but James, you're there every day. Were they feeling a bit of stress? You know, they, they probably were. And this was a perfect example of you can never take your foot off the gas no matter what the situation is, no matter what you are seated. Every game counts. And it's those little plays that Ryan mentioned earlier today where Ryan Rado Parapunov had that one overpass where he got dug, could have played it and maybe set the outside. Those little plays is what defined the game tonight and UCSD came out on top. All right, we'll take our final break. Come back, have some final thoughts as Hawaii falls in five to UC San Diego. Welcome back to the post-game show on Spectrum Sports. So the championship match of the Big West Conference Tournament is set tomorrow night, 7 o'clock right here on Spectrum Sports. The number two seed, UC Santa Barbara, will take on the number four seed, UC San Diego. And Ryan, I'll ask you first, your thoughts on tomorrow night's matchup? How do you think it's going to go? Who, who do you like? You know, I think it's going to be a battle. It's hard to put anything against San Diego after tonight's performance. I mean, uh, they've really shown that they have the firepower, that they have the personnel that can get it done, that can beat a team like Hawaii. But at the same time, you look at a team like Santa Barbara, they also have a lot of weapons that uh, can really pose some problems for a lot of teams. They're big, they're physical, they're fast to the pins. Uh, I think it's a great matchup. James? Ryan, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's going to be a phenomenal matchup, and both teams play very similar. They're fast to the pins, and they can both serve aggressively. I think tomorrow night's going to come down to the service-receive game, but also who wants it more. And they're both relentless on defense. They have great pin hitters. Santa Barbara does have the advantage that they have a couple more veterans on their team going into this game, and they've been in a situation like this more than San Diego has. So I think it's going to be a great matchup and a great Big West Conference final. Look at Kyle. Even with the ice pack on his shoulder, he's still smiling. Okay. And why not? <laughs> that's probably the big, they upset the number one and unbeaten Rainbow Warriors, probably the biggest win in the history of your program. So don't forget, tomorrow night, the Tritons and the Gauchos, 7 o'clock right here on Spectrum Sports. There'll be no game on uh, so this is our final game on of the season and James thanks for uh, for filling in this year we had fun with you thank you for having me on the show and hopefully we'll see you again next year on the women's season you <laughs> never know and Ryan as always outstanding work by you and I look forward to seeing you in the fall for sure could I mention one Wahine. thing really fast Absolutely. I did want to mention I was going to save it for tomorrow just the uh, 
a huge shout out to Stanford having their last uh, season this year moving forward. It was a huge movement in volleyball and what a great program that they have had. And it is really sad to see a program like that go. So I just wanted to give a huge shout out to the Stanford men's volleyball program and what an amazing success they've had throughout the entire year. Yep. And I'm sad to see it go. Rainbow, former Rainbow Warrior uh, Daniel Rosai, one of the uh, coaches on that staff. All right, so that will wrap things up for us here this evening. Special thanks, as always, to our terrific, outstanding Spectrum Sports crew. For the final time, for James, for Ryan, I'm Scott. We bid you aloha and a good evening from Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa.